And now, the Erickson Countdown continues. Giant Stadium on a gorgeous afternoon. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys coming in. And coming in tied for first in the NFC East with the Washington Redskins who are facing the Philadelphia Eagles. The Giants trying to get to 500 today after beating the New Orleans Saints in a defensive game last week. There's a, a man the Cowboys want to see get on track, Emmett Smith. Giants would like to see Brad DeLuiso get going. Brock Marion back deep along with Herschel Walker. The Cowboys will get the ball first and the kickoff into the end zone. And Herschel Walker will finally down it for a touchback. Troy Aikman, impressive with seven touchdown passes and only one interception, but his completion percentage is his lowest since his rookie year. And up front, Matt talked about second-year center Clay Shiver. Larry Allen is okay back at right guard. Eric Williams always tough at right tackle. Emmett Smith, still no rushing touchdowns this year. Michael Irvin and Anthony Miller are the wide receivers, and Eric Bjornsson is the tight end. Cowboys start from the 20. They have four wide receivers, including Darryl Johnston, and Emmett Smith finds a hole off the right side. And the Cowboys couldn't ask for a better start than that, a gain of 15 yards. Defensively for the Giants, and they have played well despite their 2-3 and three record. All four of the defensive line, especially Keith Hamilton and Michael Strahan. Jesse Armstead has been a big play linebacker for the Giants. And in the secondary, Jason Seahorn and Felipe Sparks at corner. Tito Wooten and rookie Sam Garns, the safety. Smith and this time Corey Widmer stopped Smith after a gain of maybe one yard. There's so much has been talked about with this Dallas Cowboy offense and protecting Troy Aikman and him getting all the hits and you know it still comes down to Aikman making the right reads and then making the calls and he's getting that part done. When you go back and you watch the tapes where they've had their problems has not been at the quarterback spot it's been up front the offensive line and really communications. Troy Aikman's completion percentage has been very impressive against the Giants. Second and nine. Aikman's toss to Darrell Johnston, and he is tripped up by Jesse Armstead after a short game, and that will bring up third and long for Dallas. 98 right there, Jesse Armstead. I think Jesse Armstead is playing as well as any backer in the league right now. The only thing that's holding him back is they're not winning. Because if he was on a team that was winning, they'd say Armstead is having a Pro Bowl year. I think he's having one anyway. If he maintains this pace, heck, there's no reason to see him get the honors at the end of the year. He went to high school in Dallas and was sorry he was not drafted by the Cowboys, so he loves playing the Cowboys each year. Three wide receivers on third and seven. Troy Aikman has a world of time in his pass is caught by Stepford Williams for a first down. Williams into Giant territory in a gain of 17 yards. You know, you heard Howie Long talk in the pregame about Michael Irvin and they're getting, see, they're going to take two people and they're going to take care of all this over here. See, so when you start dedicating this, then on the other side, something's got to give. They went man to man with a safety over the top. Stepford Williams does a nice job of isolating himself and then breaking to the outside. David LaFleur, the rookie tight end, is in the lineup on first down. Cowboys on the Giant, 45. Aikman with a short drop, and over the middle, he goes to LaFleur. And LaFleur has another Cowboy first down as Sam Garns and Jason Seahorn make the tackle, and they're picking up big chunks of yardage on this first drive. Yeah, good point, Dick, and how they're doing it is what's important. You know, if you listen to our pregame show, you heard Terry Bradshaw and also Ronnie Lott talking about the other guys having to pick up the offense. Bradshaw was talking about LaFleur, number one pick. He's got to start making some contributions in the offense. He made his first NFL reception last week against the Bears. Cowboys driving Herschel Walker in motion. First down at the 31, and here's Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith bursts up the middle. 
And a touchdown saving tackle by Felipe Sparks at about the 10. That was that, a 20-yard pickup, Matt. Yeah, that, that, was like, that looked like Emmett, and that looked like Dallas. Now watch, they're just going to go power. Eric Williams, nice job by Strahan right here, stuffing it. Now watch Emmett, redirect, come right back inside. That's running with your eyes. Eric Williams and Michael Strahan, boom, right to the line of scrimmage. That's a battle Strahan wins right there. See, he held his point. And now, because Emmett had the time and the eyesight, cuts back inside the 20 yards. First and 10, just outside the 10-yard line. And the pitch to Emmett Smith. And this time he'll lose. Chad Bratsky was the first to get in there, and Jesse Armstead finished the job. And a loss of three. You know, one of the trends that I have seen in the National Football League in the last couple of years is this. It's really tough to run outside. And here's the reason. Teams have gone to the 4-3. They've taken their bigger people and put them inside. And now the linebackers have gotten smaller and faster. And when they're uncovered, they can get outside to the edges. And that makes it tougher to get out there. Since week 12 of last year, the Cowboys have really struggled inside the red zone. They face second down and 13. Aikman up the middle, and he's got Emmett Smith. And Smith gets to the two-yard line. That will bring up third and about one. With Corey Miller making the tackle, and a flag is down back at the 20-yard line. So a loss on the play. And the referee, Ed Hockley, will explain things. Illegal hands to the face by the offense, number 79. 10-yard penalty, it's still second down. Let's watch Eric Williams working on Michael Strahan. Coming on the outside, this is the matchup that's going to be going on all day long. See, that's what they called right there. Right at the end, he got the right hand up into the face. Man, that was the Eric Williams rule that they put in a few years ago after he had been working on Reggie White in the championship game. And here's the good part about it. See, Strahan knows it's going to happen, so he's willing to take it. Williams and Strahan shaping up as quite a battle today. Second and 23 following the penalty. And Aikman's pass thrown behind Darrell Johnston incomplete. See where the matchup was underneath? The matchup again is Jesse Armstead. You know, in talking to Armstead yesterday, I was asking him about his man-to-man -man coverage, and he was, I said, hey, you're going to be locked up a couple times, man. He said, hey, I won't get beat. I have not given up a touchdown. I am not going to give up a touchdown. It's a man with a lot of pride and playing like he means it. He said, no back is going to get behind me. He's good. Dumps it off to Emmett Smith, and he stopped at the 20. So the Giants close the door with a help from a loss on a play and a penalty. Watch inside Conrad Hamilton, and they know where Michael Irvin's going to be. And so when you know where that guy is going to be, and the defense is going to take care of him, you have to go up top. And Step Fred Williams is being taken by Tito Wooten. Heck, Wooten jumped that thing. Good coverage down the field by the Giants. Scott Gallion on the tackle. So Richie Cunningham, 15 of 16. Field goal department. This is a 37-yard field goal attempt, and the kick is good. But before the penalty, the Cowboys got to the two, so the Giants have to be thankful. It is only a 3 to nothing Dallas lead. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to fly. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? And by Visa, the official card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. Welcome back to Giant Stadium, where the Dallas Cowboys have taken a 3-0 lead on an opening drive. 10 plays, 61 yards, and... The penalty stalled on a illegal use to the hands penalty against Eric Williams as the Giants closed the door. Now Toby Goen, been an outstanding kicker in his rookie year for the Cowboys. And this is a short kick, not a good kickoff for Goen. And it is picked up by David Patton. And he is...
is run out of bounds at the 27-yard line. David Patton on the return, and the Giants will have their first series on offense when we return to the Meadowlands. 8.43 remaining in the first quarter, and the Giants uh, getting their hands on the ball for the first time today. Dave Brown's numbers this year, and as we told you, playing with a strained muscle in his chest, he is wearing a shoulder strap, which he says will limit him somewhat in his ability to throw. Danny Cannell, the second-year quarterback, waiting in the wings in case Brown has trouble. On first down, Tyrone Wheatley breaks a couple of tackles. Wheatley making his first start of the year with Rodney Hampton out as well as Tiki Barber. A gain of 17 up front, Oban Bishop. Lance Scott is the new center. And Ron Stone and Scott Gregg on the right side. Wheatley with a big first gain as Charles Way at fullback. Chris Calloway and Kevin Alexander, the wide receivers. Howard Cross, the tight end. Calloway in motion on first down. Brown rolls out and throws underneath to Aaron Pierce, the second tight end. And Pierce... Picks up about three yards. Defensively for the Cowboys, and that unit has played well this year. Carver, Hennings back in the lineup. Casillas and Tony Tolbert. Pleasant surprise of the linebackers, especially rookie Dexter Copley. And in the secondary, none better in the NFL than that group, and that includes all four. Second down and eight, and the pitch is to Wheatley. And Wheatley gets to midfield. It'll bring up... Third and nine, Shante Carver making the tackle. You know, you're watching this New York Giant offense, and you look at what they're trying to get done. And you remember Jim Fossil a couple weeks ago said, I'm going to put it back on the players and let the players make the play. Well, then what happened is there is real players start to fall out. They lost Dyke Hill, they lost Tiki Barber. But he's got himself a plan, and he's going to still put it back on the players to make the play. And newly signed Derek Pedro wide to the left, number 33. With a four-wide receiver set up at the slam pass, maybe shy of the first down. It is caught by Amani Toomer, who did not get to the sticks. And the Giants are in Dallas territory, but are shy of the first down. I'll tell you what, Dave Brown has come out throwing well and throwing on rhythm and quick. And a smart job in the offense of how they're using him. They take him and they roll him the first pass, and then second is just that quick slant back inside. I, I like what Jim Fossil has done. And as you've said, he wanted to really open up the offense, but when you lose Ike Hilliard and uh, Tiki Barber, and of course, uh, Brian Williams inside makes a big difference. He's got some speed, though, that can help them. I like Eric Pegram. He's got to get acclimated to this offense, and he'll do well. The Giants are a full yard, maybe a little more than that the That looks like a shot. bad spot. It didn't look like they were closer after the catch than when they spotted the ball. And Jim Fossil not taking any chances, and Brad Maynard, his rookie punter, will come on to kick it away. Crowd, of course, always wants you to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, it's easy for them. They're not playing. <laughs> Deion Sanders, who returned a punt 83 yards. That's his career longest against the Chicago Bears last week. kick inside the 15 and that's exactly what the Giants wanted inside the 15 yard line in fact at about the 10 with no return we'll be right back to Giants Stadium in just a moment Emmett Smith who gained 33 yards on that first drive has the baseball cap on he's on the sideline and by design Barry Switzer said he was going to spell Emmett Smith, and so Sherman Williams is in the lineup now and running back for the Cowboys, who start from their 10-yard line. Giants have Ray Agnew, who have come in for Robert Harris at defensive tackle. And the give is to Sherman Williams, and he gets nothing on the play. Keith Hamilton, who's had a terrific season up front, Making the play. I think when I look at this giant defense, I think there's a couple guys who really picked their game up. Keith Hamilton, he's playing like they hoped he would play two years ago. He's coming off the ball. He had a little bit of trouble at the beginning of the season doing that. 
But now, I think not only is he coming off the ball, he's doing it with authority. And he's holding the point, he's making plays, he's got good movement. Darrell Johnston coming out. Stepford Williams comes in as an extra wide receiver. Second down and ten. Here's Sherman Williams. And Williams is tackled by Jason Seahorn after a gain of about three yards. Dallas Cowboys said one of the things they wanted to do was try to get outside with their running game. Now, traditionally, they've, they've not been an outside running team. Sherman Williams is a change of guy. And you know, have Emmett running, he's going to run like he did today at the start of this game. And, heck, there won't have to be much of a change of Larry Switzer said the two things we're not a shotgun team and a sweep team. But they're doing a little more of the sweep stuff so far. Third and six. Aikman under pressure, and his pass is caught by Michael Irvin, his first catch of the year, and that will be sufficient for a Dallas Cowboy first down. How good is Troy Aikman at seeing the defense? See how fast he just that hut hut, watch. He's going to jump, and he's going to, and that's what Aikman sees. See right there, just that little second, now immediately he comes right off and runs the out. Nice adjustment on the outside by Irvin, and a nice job of seeing what's going on by Aikman. Right in front of Tito Wooten for the first down. Irvin with six catches for 105 yards, including a touchdown against the Bears last week. Scott, Scott, Scott. And the Cowboys out of real trouble. First down on their 21. And uh, Troy Aikman will call the timeout as the play clock was getting down to about two. Timeout will return to Giant Stadium with the Cowboys up three to nothing. With the Cowboys in front three to nothing, this series has shown a contrast where the Dallas Cowboys have dominated the Giants in the first meeting of each season. The Giants seem to feel that they look for something fancy instead of playing solid football. They have come back in the second games to play much tougher, winning many of them, including last year, right here at Giant Stadium. As you look at Ernie Zampisi, the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys. I thought he just was a smoking machine. <laughs> he always holds those pens in his hand. And 10 at the 21 following the timeout and the pass is caught by Michael Irvin and that was a shoe top catch by Irvin and right now for a McDonald's game break let's return to Kevin Harlan at our Fox Television Center in Hollywood. All right Dick in Philadelphia quarterback Ty Detmer who threw two red zone interceptions last week against the Vikings leaves nothing to chance here on third and goal the flag was against the Redskins Eagles seven nothing back to New York and Dick and Matt. They always, always play well in that up there in Philadelphia. That's a game, but you know, I'd pick one. I'd pick Philadelphia to beat Washington up there today. Maybe in overtime. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> First down at the 35-yard line, and Sherman Williams. Runs right into Tito Wooten, but not before the Cowboys get another first down. Boy, their average yards per play has got to be huge. Well, yeah, and here's the reason. Well, watch right inside. Watch Big Nate Newton and Larry Allen coming around. Right there's the block. He was able to seal Widmer, and he blew right up inside. A nice job of Clay Shiver blocking back. And then there comes Allen. There's the block by Allen. Two and eight does a nice job right up inside. And you, and you know when you do you do something good. I mean, Shiver knew it as soon as he got it done. 12 yard pickup for Sherman Williams. And the Cowboys close to midfield. They said Darrell Johnston in motion, and he's on the receiving end. And still going. Darrell Johnston finally brought down by Jason Seahorn, but not before he gets the Cowboys 21 more yards to the 31. You know, Dick, sometimes you just have those days when you see everything. I think Troy Aikman is seeing everything right now. I think he's seeing the whole field. He's throwing to spots. He's throwing on timing. He's seeing the blitz coming inside. He's seeing it all. And the Cowboys have over 100 yards more gained thus far than the Giants. Emmett Smith has returned to the Dallas lineup. First down on the 32-yard line. And the pitch to a well-rested Emmett Smith. And Smith gets inside the 30. Before that last play, the Cowboys had gained nearly nine yards a play. And that uh, that's going to get you a lot of points. Okay, and they're just they're doing it the old Dallas way. They're just starting to pound on that defensive front. The Giants have to find a way to get themselves off the field. 
they're going to have to start, whatever that balance is, they're going to have to find themselves a way either to make a big play, force a penalty, do something, but they can't stay on the field all day long. Ursula Walker checking in, second and six. And England's pass is caught by Eric Bjornsson. Short of the first down by a couple of yards, Sam Garnes, the good-looking rookie strong safety from the Bronx. One of the five boroughs in New York making the tackle will bring up third and short. And that was the matchup Ronnie Lott was talking about in the pregame show. He was going to be saying that Sam Garnes, the rookie, and Bjornsson was going to be a matchup that, that the Cowboys, if they wanted to do anything with their offense, was going to have to win. Again, it was going away from their standard three guys. And Bjornsson, in that time, beat Garnes. They'll go with four wide receivers on third and two. And here's Emmett Smith. And Smith close to the first down yardage. Jesse Armstead in on the play. And we'll see where they spot the ball. Are you talking about Eric Williams and you talk about somebody who's going to be real physical. And now you're going to just throw him right up. The, you know, that's that's like the opposite of the hump move. You just kind of throw Bratsky up the field. And all they did was they take Bjornsson, a nice job on Strahan right there. And they came back on that little wide short motion. His job is to crack the end man and then try to get to the outside. And let's see if it uh, prevented the Cowboys from getting a first down. We're going to have a measurement. It appears to be a bit short. Dick, you know, a few years ago, and Eric Williams was the best lineman in all of football, and then he had his accident. And then he wasn't the same guy. But I think he's as close to that guy now as I've seen him. And it looks like they're going to be short. And, of course, people were saying a couple of years ago that this was by far the best offensive line in the NFL. And they have shown some holes this year. Well, where they really, where it really shows up is at the center position. Shiver is not as physical as Ray Donaldson or as experienced as Stepnoski. So he doesn't quite get the push at the middle of the line as he did. Now, Larry Allen is, is excellent. Nate Newton is still very good. But when you lose the middle and you don't get the same kind of push, sometimes everybody comes off the ball and the middle's kind of just staying where it is. Well, they're on the road back. Richie Cunningham coming in to try a field goal from 41 yards out. He connected from 38 yards out moments ago. So the Giants again held on third down. Richie Cunningham, no good as he hooked it to the left. That's only the second miss by Cunningham. He got 18 that one. tries, yep. We talk about getting off the field. They come up with that third down, the tackle, and it's short, and then Cunningham does the rest. And he just, he just kind of hooked that thing. Well, Richie Cunningham, as you saw, the NFL. NFC special teams player for the month of September misses the kick, so Barry Switzer's Cowboys miss an opportunity. But they have controlled the ball thus far. Now the Giants, trailing 3-0, will start from their 31. And this is where the Giants have to get first downs to give the defense a rest. Easier said than done. A big reverse, and the pass hit. Now a flag comes down, intended for Charles Way. Dexter Copley, the rookie linebacker, defending downfield, and a flag finally is thrown. They were going to try to sneak Charles Way on Copley, but you know what? Every now and then, and they're going to call it on Copley, but that's a mismatch in terms of speed. I would take Dexter Copley and match him with anybody out of the back. Pass interference by the defense, number 52, automatic first down. Dexter Copley's the fastest linebacker I think I've ever seen. His feet are just, they're phenomenal. He's like a running back. Look at him back there. His feet are like Barry, he's like Barry Sanders on the other side of the ball. On the first play, and here is Tyrell Wheatley with good running. Brock Marion brings him down after a gain of about uh, seven yards for Tyrell Wheatley, who seems to be revitalized since he got the starting job back for the injured Tiki Barber. And he's also get, getting his shot, which is what he wants. And he wants... He wants to be the guy. And, you know, Rodney Hampton's been here, so he hasn't been. 
And then I think maybe what woke him up is all of a sudden he was he was number two and number three Barber jumped right past him. That's going to uh, end things in the first quarter. And the quarter ends with the Dallas Cowboys leading the New York Giants by a score of three to nothing. Here at sold out Giants Stadium, Dick Stockton and Matt Millen. Cowboys lead three nothing and the Giants with a second and three on the Cowboy 46. There's Wheatley. Tyrell Wheatley is hit short of the first down by two yards, and it was Brock Marion who came up from his safety position. You know, you look at this Dallas defense, and you say how well they're doing and stuff, but I mean, here's a breakdown. You look at their defensive front, they're not playing as well as they have in the past. Their linebackers, especially in the middle, have been slow at what they were last year, but their secondary, the secondary is really playing well. And the guy who's leading the, the charge back there is Darren Woods, and I, I think he's a great one. Look at this ball control edge that the Cowboys have had. That's why this is a big third down for the Giants. Dave Brown's pass incomplete. Kevin Alexander was the intended receiver, and Deion Sanders was in the mix. So that'll bring up fourth down, and the, the Giant defense will have to head back on the field shortly. Talked to Deion before the game, and... He's all excited about playing, but the one thing was on his mind were his two kids. He said, do me a favor and tell my little ones that I love them. That's a good idea. He said, guess what? You got it, Deion. You should do that. A lot of times, Deion Sanders is just uh, standing out there doing nothing. His teams go away from him. Now he's got a chance to return a kick. Brad Daner with a line drive kick going away from Deion Sanders. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. And the Cowboys will get the ball back for a third time when we return to Giant Stadium. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Isuzu, builders of the completely reinvented 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu, go farther. By Miller Lite, now official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Back here at Giant Stadium, the Cowboys with the ball once again, leading three to nothing. Sherman Williams uh, had been in the huddle, and then Emmett Smith came in just moments ago, so he is in the backfield as the Cowboys begin from the 20. Making the time. Going up top for Herschel Walker, and he was covered by Sam Garns. You know, Dick, you know, I talked about Eric Williams and him being back, and, you know, he gets credit. You can see he's got his game face on. You know, he does his play physical, and then he lets you know. See a little push at the end? He'll be physical, physical, plays over. Hey, I'm still here. And then, you know, he's going to take Brasky, just throw him up the field. Those are all indicators that he's back, not only physically, but mentally, because now mentally he knows he can do those things and let you know because physically he's going to keep pounding you. And keep pounding you. Keep pounding you. Second and ten. On the 20, and here is Emmett Smith riding for tough yards inside. That's where Emmett Smith has taken a beating over the years. Still looking for his first rushing touchdown this year, picking up four on the play. You know, so much, so many times this Dallas offense, you'll look and you see Larry Allen and Eric Williams on the right side, and then they run left, and there's a reason for them. See, what happens is, the opposing coaches aren't dumb. They know they're sitting over there. They know they're the best linemen out there. And so what they do is they adjust their defenses. They'll either put their tackles and ends to that side and a backer behind them, or they'll roll their coverage and force you to run away from them. Miller and Williams split to the left. And now Aikman's pass underneath to Stratford Williams in a first down. The slant tough to stop. Conrad Hamilton, the nickelback making the tackle in a gain of Aiden. Aikman on the mark today. Well, he's on the mark, and here's the reason why that slant is tough to defend. There's nobody in the middle. The reason there's nobody in the middle is because those safeties are being eaten up on the outside by the presence of Michael Irvin. They're not going to let Irvin beat him. That's, that's good football. Make somebody else do it. So far, Anthony Miller has not been that man. Irvin has been the key guy. He's gone to Williams a couple of times. down from the 32 
And the pass inside to Daryl Johnston, knocked away by Corey Miller. So once again, Troy Aikman trying to go with another uh, well, pass underneath. Yeah, they're spreading people out, and they're going to use what your defense, you're going to use that against them. You know, that is the old Texas route. That comes from Ernie Zampezi went way back. And, it, and he's everybody uses that route. And Corey Miller, when he covered him, did a good job of understanding where he was trying to get to. They spread you out. They'll try to run and force you to come too high and then break back underneath you. Troy Aikman's percentage a lot higher. 9 of 12. Second and 10. Looking right, throwing left, and Darrell Johnson... And the Moose finally hit by Armstead. First one to get to him after a pickup of five. So it'll be third down and about seven for the Cowboys. And Troy Aikman, Troy, he, he impresses me. Look at his eyes. See where he's going? He knows he wants to go to his left. You see that quick turn right at the end? So what he'll do is he'll draw everybody to this top side. He'll come back looking right, look right, try to draw the help to the other side, and then boom, turn his shoulders and hit it outside. Third down and five for the Cowboys on their 37. Aikman's pass and incomplete. Good defense. And that was Anthony Miller was stripped away by Conrad Hamilton. Hamilton was all over. You know, the, yeah, you see Anthony Miller at the end slapping his head. Anthony Miller's got to pick his game up. He hasn't been able to get any separation. You don't get any separation, it's going to be tough to get open. Hamilton read it perfect, hung to the inside, came over the top and slapped it down. That's good defense. And Toby Goen, who leads the NFC in net punting average. Cowboys going to rookie kickers, and they have delivered thus far. Amani Toomer back deep for the Giants. Good kick. Oh, oh. And the Toomer back on the 15. Down and Toomer finally hit at the 20-yard line by Billy Davis. Yeah, the Giant defense has shut down the Cowboys, have given up only three points, but they have been on the field a good deal of this first half. See the guys without hats? Those are, those are either double flags or guys have run out of bounds and they have to mark. Them. I know on this near sideline, Charlie Williams got waxed out of bounds into the sideline. And the Giants moving back, it apparently is against New York. That's going to put him in a deep hole here. Illegal block in the back. By the receiving team number 58 during the return. Half the distance to the goal. New York keeps the ball first down. Yeah, that's Doug Coleman working on Dexter Coakley. Coakley uses the speed. Watch the other side with Charlie Williams. Brock Marion working on him. Uh, I'm Jason Seahorn. Seahorn just throws it right into the sideline. Well, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One has teamed up with Fox Sports to provide you with aerial coverage of today's game between the Cowboys and the Giants. And what a great day to be in the sky and a great view from above of this sold-out Giant Stadium. What a beautiful day, isn't it? Temperatures in the mid-70s. First and ten for the Giants from the nine-yard line. Dave Brown back in the goal line. Pass batted down by the middle linebacker, Fred Strickland. Now, you know, you say you're going to make that throw, and it's going to have to be on timing, but where are you throwing? First you take Alexander on the outside with Deion Sanders. Heck, Deion's just stalking. Then you go to the other side with Kevin Smith, and you're going to try to run a comeback here, and Smith is right on top of that as well. And so you take advantage of your strength. And a nice job by Randall Godfrey of using up two blockers, which allowed Strickland to come clean. Giants with two tight ends on second down and 10. It's a running play to Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley made a good move against Vincent Smith and then cut inside, picked up one before Randall Godfrey. Yeah, but made they, the see, Vincent Smith made the whole play. Godfrey makes the tackle, but the play is made by Smith. Smith does a great job. See, they're going to try to get to the outside. Watch Smith. He's going to try to bounce everything to the outside. Smith's going to come up and make everything. See, you're not going outside. He holds his leverage, forces him back inside. See, that's where all the players are. So Smith gets faked a little bit, but he makes the whole play just by maintaining his discipline. 
Total yardage and a big edge for the Cowboys. Yeah. Three-man rush for Dallas on third down and nine. And here comes the blitz. Dave Brown under pressure, and the pass is incomplete. And it was nearly picked off. Dexter Coakley was there, so there's no place to throw. And you knew this was going to happen. You don't have to boo Dave Brown. Brown was trying to make a play, and there was nothing there. Remember, Remember. he's got that uh, pec muscle, the shoulder, and he says it's like a knife going through whenever he throws the ball. Yeah, and that thing is, re is restricting his motion. I don't think there's any – I think Dave Brown is one of the toughest suckers in this league. He knows it. I mean, that thing hurts every time he throws it. So Dave Brown, as a battler, did not practice for nearly three days this week. But he's out there, a game quarterback, but under a lot of pressure. Brad Maynard kicking from his end zone. And Deion Sanders at midfield. Here he goes. And he runs right into a series of blue shirts led by Scott Gallion. But an eight-yard return will give the Cowboys possession in giant territory when we come back. Cowboys still in front by that 3 to nothing lead over the Giants. And today's Aflac trivia question is, who were the Cowboys' first-round draft picks from 1988 to 1990? We'll have the answer coming up shortly. Meanwhile, Cowboys on the giant 42-yard line. Time of possession, nearly 10 minutes difference in the Cowboys' favor. Here's Emmett Smith on first down, cutting to the outside, and Sam Garns will wrestle him down after a pickup of about four. And right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's return to Kevin Harlan at our Fox Television Center in Hollywood. All right, Dick and Green Bay, the Packers take the lead on a 31-yard touchdown pass. Brett Favre to Antonio Freeman. Packers cash in on a war done fumble. Green Bay 7-3. And the welcoming party. Back to New York with Dick and Matt. Thank you very much, Kevin. And so uh, Tampa Bay getting a real big road test for the first time this year. Yeah, a real big test period. And up there in, in Green Bay, which is not an easy place to win. Second and seven. Eight minutes pass underneath to Darrell Johnston. will still leave him short of a first down by about four or five. Yeah, you're talking... You're talking to Michael Strahan. You talk about being physical with Eric Williams. You know what to expect. And this is a little little part to the arsenal you don't expect. See, when you play a guy like Eric Williams, Eric Williams reminds me of John Hanna, how he used to play, where you just go out and physically beat the guy. This time he changes it up and cuts you, and that, that gets into your head. Third down and four. Right now, the Cowboys would have to be outside of field goal range. Aikman. And his pass is caught by Anthony Miller on a turnaround and out of bounds inside the 25. So Miller, who has yet to produce for the Cowboys since coming over from Denver, makes a clutch 18-yard catch. Well, that whole thing doesn't happen unless you get your protection up front. Remember, yesterday, last week they were talking about not giving Aikman getting time. Well, now he has the time. And when you have the time and you're working outside, Sparks has the underneath, but watch the throws behind him. A great catch by Anthony Miller of just changing his body position in mid-flight coming down with him. Troy Aikman has not been touched so far today. First and 10 on the giant 18-yard line. Aikman going for the end zone, and it's batted down. Great play by Jason Seahorn on Michael Irvin. That was simply a bang-bang play by Seahorn, who has gained a lot of respect in Troy Aikman's eyes. Yeah, he's gained a lot of respect around the league because, look, look at the inside. There's nothing down here. So now you can expect that it's going to be there. Did you notice he never bit on the out? He knew that they were going to try to get back to the inside. So Seahorn hung to the middle, expected Urban to come back to him, and then broke in the ball and knocked it down. Second and ten. Marshall Walker. And the handoff is to Emmett Smith. Scott Gallion and from behind gets inside the 15-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about six for the Cowboys. You know, I think this giant defense, few of their guys have picked up their play. I think Strahan's picked up his play. I think Corey Widmer. I think Jesse Armstead. 
I think Robert Harris inside is play, are playing well. There's, their corners are playing pretty good. But more important than that, I think collectively they're playing together as a unit better. They sure have. Only two touchdowns allowed in the last 11 quarters by that unit. Third and six, Aikman's pass, and nearly intercepted off the hands of Stepford Williams and Scott Gallion had it and could not hold on, and that'll bring up fourth down. Aikman's hot. Aikman read it perfect. Stepford Williams worked right in front of Gallion. Gallion let the underneath go and was going to break to the outside for help on the uh, undercut. Aikman read it, and bing, right where it had to be would have been a first down. Instead, they'll have to settle for another field goal try. Richie Cunningham... In his last 10 games, 32 field goals. That looks like a good number, but the Cowboys would have liked some TDs in that span as well. This is a 31-yard field goal attempt by Cunningham. And Cunningham's kick is good. So he's two for three. And here's Troy Aikman's reaction. You pointed out he was hot. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mazda. Come see what happens when a car company has more engineers and fewer accountants. Mazda. And welcome back to Giant Stadium. There is Richie Cunningham, who has kicked two field goals in three tries, the last from 31 yards out to give the Cowboys a 6 to nothing lead. Toby Gowen with another short kick. And Kevin Alexander returning. And on a reverse, here is David Patton. Trying to turn the corner, and a flag is down. We may have an illegal block against the Giants. Yeah, it's going to be on Robert Massey. He had him right away. And on Kevin Mathis. Mathis came clean, and Robert Massey had to get the block. But here's the rule. If you see the back of his jersey, don't block it. And Massey, a bit overzealous, he saw the reverse. and He knew it was there. Yeah. He also knew he had to make the block to spring it. That penalty will hurt an offense that really has not been able to muster anything today. Illegal they, block in the back. Yeah. By number 44, the receiving team during the return. Half the distance to the goal, first down. There he comes. Yeah, there's Rodney Young got his block up top. And right here it is. See, right in the back. And it's a great call by the officials. They're right on top of it. Tell you why it really hurts more than the offense. The Giants have to generate something in their special teams if they're going to get anything with this field position in their offense. So that's the second straight time they've had poor field position to start a drive. Tyler Wheatley gets maybe a yard. Well, once again, today's Aflac trivia question is, who were the Cowboys' first-round draft picks from 1988 through 1990? And the answer, they're still there, and they're still golden. Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, and Emmett Smith. That's quite a series of number one picks. Irvin, Aikman, and Smith. Sounds like a place you'd go if you had some problems. Cowboys had problems, and they got healthy with those three. Kevin Smith, the corner, called the timeout. There's something going on in coverage he didn't like. So that is going to be a Dallas timeout. Watch Kevin Smith down there. See, he sees the slot receiver, and there's nobody covering him. So he starts yelling back inside. Now, Dexter Coakley will see this, and he'll kick over to try to take this coverage right here. Kevin Smith calls a timeout. He's, he knows they've got problems in matchups, so they'll just call the timeout. Second and seven, Roderick Thomas, who had a sprained right elbow, is in the lineup now. Shante Palmer is out, and there's Dave Brown's pass, and intended for Callaway, who was hit incomplete. Let me tell you something. Darren Woodson. Let's talk I, about it. Yeah, take a good look at Darren Woodson because in my mind, what I have seen through six weeks of this season, I think Darren Woodson would be your defensive player of the year. That's how good he's playing. And the reasons are simple. See, now he, he gets away with a little bit of a bump there, but he's aggressive. He can play like a linebacker. He's a good blitzer. He can play your two deep safety. He can match up in the slot and take a third guy. He's a good blitzer out. He does a lot of things, and he's effective doing all of them. There's nothing he can't do in the secondary, and it's a great one. Third down and seven. Eric Pegram in the lineup as a third down back. And Dave Brown's pass incomplete. Kevin Alexander was the intended receiver, but that was thrown out of bounds. And Brown takes his first solid hit of the game. Yeah, Herbie McCormick yeah. waxed him, and he got pressure. 
and they're able to get that kind of pressure because of the coverage outside. You know, they're going to come with the blitz inside. Here goes Bates and Williams. On the outside is Tolbert. Hervin McCormick comes from the inside late after the ball, but a good solid hit. There's Danny Cannell, a backup who worked with the first unit this week. Deion Sanders back to return once again. Brad Maynard is kicking from the shadow of his goalpost. And this is a short kick. And it bounces straight up, and the Giants will down it. But once again, the Cowboys will get the ball in Giant territory following a 31-yard punt. Well, tonight it's game four of the American League Division Series between the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians, and the Yankees can clinch tonight on the road. At 7 p.m., join JB and the gang from Lambeau Field as they get you caught up on all the NFL scores and highlights. Chip Carey and Steve Lyons will be in Hollywood with the latest word from the Baltimore Orioles-Seattle Mariners Series. Won yesterday by Seattle, the Mariners stayed alive. A preview of game four of the Yankees and the Indians, and it all begins tonight on Fox at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Aikman getting rushed, but gets it off to Darrell Johnston. Sam Garns came in on a safety blitz, but didn't get there in time. Pickup of eight. Well, their offense today has been, I mean, look at this. You can see the results, but look at the yards. I mean, they put the yards together. You see they had the punt and the missed field goal, and then the other two field goals. The big one on the first one was was the penalty that took them out. They had first and goal, and they ended up not getting and getting the, getting the field goal. And this is the second straight series in Giant territory to start. Second and two, Sherman Williams. He did not get to the sticks. Corey Whitmer playing improved football in middle linebacker this year, making the tackle, and it'll be third and short. He ran the little trap inside, and they brought Larry Allen around, and the the way to beat that is you have to attack him. Watch everything inside. Larry Allen's going to he's gonna come right around on the inside. Here comes this right here. Now up comes Whitmer. You stuck him big right there. Good job of holding the point here. Nowhere to go, and then the free man comes back underneath, and you stop him. Third down and one, and the Cowboys have three tight ends in the lineup. And the give is to Williams, and he spins his way for the first down. Corey Whitmer, Corey Whitmer's really playing well. Corey Whitmer stuffed that thing. Credit Sherman Williams going back outside. That's Scott Galbraith. Anytime he's in the game, there's extra words talked about. He just gets in there and starts jawing. Chatty guy. Yeah, but Corey Whitmer, Corey Whitmer's really picked his game up. Scott Galbraith was in Dallas, then went up to Washington, then came back. You got to wonder about the uh, Giants and how much they can handle their defensive unit being on the field. They have played well. You mentioned the penalty foiled one chance, a missed field goal, but Dallas hasn't gotten into the end zone. And the pass, and the Giants finally got to Aikman a bit. The Orts and the intended receiver pressure that time from Keith Hamilton. Yeah, and Hamilton is another one of those guys we talked about about picking his game up. And this is where, if they're going to get anything today, they're going to have to start working inside. He just, that's a nice job of Hamilton, but a better job by John Fox, their defensive coordinator. So what they did is they know Clay Shiver's having problems. So they isolated him with Hamilton then doubled down on the guards and eat them up and make it go one-on-one -on -one inside. John Fox, the coordinator. Here comes a blitz up the middle. Aikman gets hit as he lets it go, and the pass is incomplete. Nice job by Sherman Williams, Dick. Did you see how he picked yes, it up? I did, and the Giants are starting to put some pressure on yeah. Troy Aikman. And let me show you how they're doing it. This is what I was talking about. See, they're doubling down. They're covering the guards. They're going man-to-man -man inside with Shiver. Now they're going to run him straight up inside. There goes the motion. Sherman Williams has to pick up the blitzer. You go to his throwing side. Nice job of Williams of getting over there, and then Troy Aikman is able to get the ball off. Aikman has lived a charm life so far, but now the Giants are starting to knock him down. Emmett Smith has returned to the Dallas backfield. And now the Cowboys are going to use up their third and final timeout of this first half. 4.24 remaining. It's a 6 to nothing Dallas lead.
Troy Aikman calling a timeout, and the Cowboys are all out of timeouts. Last week they played Chicago, and you can see that versus the Blitz didn't have the real big numbers. Today, four for eight, and, and they're just starting now to start to come after. And so they were probing, and what John Fox, the coordinator, was doing is seeing how they're going to protect it. And now you figure that out and make your adjustments. Third and ten. And let's see, one, two, three, four. Yellow flags thrown, and the initial signal is a false start penalty against the Cowboys. Ed Hockley. Before the ball was snapped, false start by the offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, Williams. still third down. And he's working against Chad Bratsky. More than that, he was just anticipation. So he was anticipating the count. And he anticipated just a little too soon. Right now, the Cowboys would be out of field goal range. Third and 15, the chess game between John Fox of the Giants. Third and 15. Pass underneath to Michael Irvin, and he's going to be run out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 35-yard line. It'll be fourth down. And about the 12 to go, Jesse Armstead on the coverage. And you know, you talked about you talked about the chess game. Well, that part of the chess, he moved his queen up front. What he were going to do is they were going to allow, they were going to give you the underneath. They are not going to give you anything deep. So you let them throw underneath. You go queen to pawn four, bing, make the hit, and it's over. Ernie Zampezi likes to use the rope, though, at times, I hear. I have no clue. <laughs> You did a good job I'm on that bluff. I don't know anything about it. Nice bluff. Good bluff ski. Amani Tuber back deep. Toby Goen will kick for the Cowboys. And heading and he shanks it. Toby Goen shanks the kick to the foul. That's a great catch over there in the sideline. Did you see that? The sun's in his eyes. Yeah, he did a good job into the sun, got the hand up, did it right. It was the video crew guy. How do you know he's on the video crew? Well, it's, it's hard, huh? Well, let me tell you, today with the Giants, he's on the video crew. Guy's getting high fives on the sideline. Meanwhile, that was a shank if I ever saw one. Look how fired up he is. Seven. And the Giants will have a new quarterback. Danny Cannell has checked in in his second year from Florida State. Those are his statistics in his second year. He has appeared once, and that was a couple of weeks ago against the Rams in St. Louis briefly. So Dave Brown out with the... Shoulder injury, Cannell in there now. First down at the 28, and Cannell with time. Underneath to Tyrone Wheatley. Breaks a tackle. He broke Dexter Coakley's tackle and is close to a first down. Fred Strickland finally brings him down. It is a giant first down. Well, you know, you come in, you have the, the young guy, you think, all right, they're going to run it. So a nice job of going with the play action. And then credit the offensive line of giving him time and just bring him back underneath. Wheatley does a great job of running through the tackle. Giants at the line of scrimmage with their hurry-up offense. This time it's Wheatley off the right side. And he picks up about five with Randall Godfrey on the play. Tyrell Wheatley, as a running back, is one of those guys, like the book on him is he likes to get outside. And, and so they'll try to play you outside in with Wheatley. And so what he's got to be able to do is get more disciplined inside and stay and see things and hit them quick up inside. Now, if you're going to give him five yards on that to the outside, heck, you'll take that one all day. We leave. He's averaged over three and a half yards a rush so far. Third, second, and five. And Cadell's pass is caught by Alexander. And he is dragged down at the Dallas 31. And this giant crowd loves it. They get a love. They should also love what the offensive line is doing because they're giving him time to throw right now. And the Cowboys are going to sit back there in the zone. And they give him the time. He's able to step up into the pocket. A nice job by Lance Scott. Now he's going to turn over in the zone and just settle down. Alexander sees it, sits in front of the corner, Smith, and it's a big first down. 25-yard gain. 
deepest penetration for the Giants. Canell on play action is going deep and intended for Callaway, and Aaron Woodson was there to knock it away on another picture play. And we're down to our two-minute warning with 1.55 showing on the clock. We'll be right back. Coming up on the Dockers Khakis Halftime Report, Kevin Harlan and Bill Moss in the studio will have scores and highlights from around the league. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Dockers Khakis Halftime Report. And there is Dave Brown with the uh, strained muscle in his chest, went down and is out of this game on the sideline. And uh, not a surprise. A lot of people thought that uh, he might not be able to last this one. I think Dave Brown is one tough guy. And I think... You know, there's not a lot. There was not a lot of room out there to throw. You know, what do you mean? He went out there and gave his best shot. Can't ask for more than that. Second down and ten. We had our two-minute warning. And the give. Up the middle to Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley will be short of the first down by about five. Roderick Thomas in on the play. Giants have all three of their timeouts remaining. Trailing six to nothing by virtue of two Richie Cunningham field goals. And we talked about this at the start of the game. If the Giants were going to be effective today offensively, they had to continue to be patient with the run and pound the ball. Really, in the first half, they haven't had much of a chance to do anything offensively. Bennell will operate out of the shotgun on third and six. And the pass to Callaway gets by Stoutmeyer. Chris Callaway with a first down inside the Cowboy 10. Nice job by Cannell. He saw the pressure. They came with a blitz from the left side. He saw it. He felt that he knew where he wanted to go. And Callaway sat down. The ball was thrown perfectly. And the Giants will call a timeout to stop the clock with one minute remaining in the first half. Giants using up their first timeout with one minute remaining in the half. Watch Callaway working in a the slot. They came with the blitz inside, so Cannell has to see it. He felt it from the left side, and then Callaway had to be in the same page. He made Stoutmeyer miss at his first down. First and goal from the 10, and the pitch to Tyrone Wheatley. And Wheatley gets back close to the line of scrimmage, Fred Strickland. You know who made that play? Deion Sanders. You see Deion Sanders, and everybody yeah. talks about him. And I'm, hey, I've been critical of Deion about, about hitting but look, you are a small guy, and you see things coming at you. Go take it on. Watch him. Undercut it. That's smart football. He slowed the whole thing down, and that was the difference in the play. Eric Pegram has come in as a back, and here is Charles Wade running right into Coakley. Gets to the nine, which will bring up third down with 22 seconds to go, and the Giants will call their second timeout. It'll be third down and goal for the Giants. First four drives, the Giants managed only 39 yards, and they've nearly doubled that, 62 in this drive alone. They are in field goal range. They have one timeout remaining, and of course, Brad D'Aloiso, if the Giants don't score here, would be called upon, and he has struggled lately, so the adventures continue. More than that, you see Tyrone Wheatley is getting all laced back up again. But now you're going to have to try to take your shot into the end zone. You don't want to come away with this on th obviously third down. You have one down left. you got to take your shot into the end zone. And I think that's what Fossil wanted to get done the last time. Isn't it amazing, though? Cannell comes in. The crowd got a little he got a little bit juiced. He made a play. Then the Tyrone Wheatley got juiced. The offensive lines. All of a sudden, boom, just like that. That just shows you how much emotion plays in this game. Giants red zone offense is the best in the NFL. They have gotten into the uh, end zone nine times in 11 tries. Third down and goal from the nine. Oh. And that was pass overthrown. Had him wide open. Was wide open. He had beaten his man, and the pass was out of the end zone. You see, Deion Sanders and Darren Woodson got crossed up. They got crossed up on the top side. You can see he's going to slot. Woodson's here. Deion Sanders is outside. And they're just going to try to take him. And Woodson squat and stopped. And had that ball been thrown better, we wouldn't be talking right now. 
Well, Brad DeLuiso has struggled. He has missed six of his nine field goal attempts. And this one is good. So his confidence has been uh, cut down somewhat, but this 27-yard field goal will help that end of it. And with 12 seconds remaining in the first half, the Giants finally score, trailing 6-3. to three. Yeah, but more than the score, they got themselves a big shot of confidence prior to the half. Danny Cannell, all of a sudden, hey, hey, this, this looks pretty good. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the New York Giants and the NFL is prohibited. Here's Darren Woodson. Now, Danny Cannell has been a patient backup waiting for his opportunity and has not had a chance to work with the first unit until this week. This is the first time when Dave Brown really had a problem with the uh, chest muscle. Now, you know, I mean, first of all, Brown's feeling bad about his chest. Second of all, he's been feeling the heat, you know, about him not playing really well, and Cannell is the guy and all that kind of stuff. So I think he's probably pretty low right now. Man's always low the backup he's on the sideline. Daloiso with a short kick, and Herschel Walker... Finally falls on it with nine seconds remaining in the first half. Troy Aikman already has thrown for 129 yards, but the Cowboys still struggling to get in the end zone. They've had to settle for field goals, and that is why their offense has bogged down. And... Uh, they have been in the red zone several times today, but have not been able to score. Not a good sign for the Cowboys that they're only up by three after having dominated this first half. Ball control has been a huge edge for the Cowboys. Aikman is going to take a knee, and that will be the end of the first half. So it's all field goals. Richie Cunningham of the Cowboys has kicked two of them. He's also missed one from 40. And then Brad Aloiso from 27 yards out to give the Giants their first points of the game after Danny Cannell took over for the injured Dave Brown on that last drive. But a close game as these teams have played throughout the year. Yeah, and more than that. Now, remember, we just the Giants just finished their first half with a nice drive and some points. They also now get to start the second half with the ball in their hands and that shot of confidence that they take with them to the locker room. Did you see that that picture of Eric Williams and Michael Strahan kind of talking to each other, patting each other? And so you try to beat each other up, and then when it's done, you just kind of say, hey, not, not a bad job. There are guys who have been friends since the second grade. Darren Woodson and Felipe Sparks went to the same uh, high school in Maryvale in Phoenix, Arizona. They're getting a chance to uh, have a little bit of a reunion during this intermission. You know, I could never do that. That was one of those things that I could never do. I had to hate somebody all game long. Well, that's the end of the first half, and Fox NFL Sunday will continue with the Dockers Khakis halftime report after these messages and a word from your local Fox. That's a good job by John Fox, their defensive coordinator. But you made a good point. This first uh, series is going to be important for the Giants, who have had trouble scoring all season long. They have scored actually 17 points total in the last two games against the uh, Hardly powerhouses in the league, the Rams and the Saints, and have only three in the first half today. But they'll get the ball, and Toby Goen will kick off. Kevin Alexander back deep for the Giants. And the uh, second half of this game is underway. And David Patton on the return brings it out. And gets it to the 25-yard line where he is hit. Cowboys defensive unit goes out on the field. And Danny Cannell, who completed four of six, as you saw, for 55 yards. One of the big differences with this Dallas defense as, a pa as opposed to years prior is they don't really get to the, to the passer unless they come with the blitz. And when they lost Charles Haley and then Leon led inside, that really, that really took care of their pass rush. Giants will have three wide receivers on first down. Screen pass to Wheaton. 
Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley down the sideline. And a great bit of running after the catch, and Wheatley into Dallas territory, getting 27 yards before Sanders and Woodson knock him out of bounds, and Darren Woodson is shaken up. Now, what watch what Cannell does. This is a nice job of feeling the screen and the pressure. See how he baited him inside? He felt it, and good patience. And then just flips it outside. A good job on the outside of Bishop on Coakley, and then Strickland can't get there trying to avoid the tackle. And Wheatley's down the sideline before Woodson can push him out and gets up slow. And there is Woodson shaken up. And uh, we talked about, uh, you said, maybe the best defensive player in the NFL thus far. And what I have watched, and he avoided that. Just kind of threw himself, forced him out of bounds. You never know what the heck. You know, I'll tell you what, it's like... It's like one of those car accidents. You get on the side and things go flying all over the place. And who the heck knows what stays together and what doesn't? And Woodson now walking uh, off on his own. You know, you don't have many safeties that grace the cover of a team's media guide each year, but that's the kind of respect that Darren Woodson has as he is on the cover of the 1997 Dallas Cowboys media guide and it's an honor well deserved on a team with so many stars. You know what I like most about Woodson, forget all uh, what a player he is. As a guy, he's one of those guys, like if I was a father, I want my son to grow up like Woodson. He's got character and he's got class. You don't find him all the time. Woodson will leave and he'll be replaced by a rookie, Omar Stoutmeyer. Seventh round pick from Fresno State. So the Giants with a first down on the Cowboy 48. On the draw play. Wheatley. And the flag is down. Wheatley picking up about four yards on the play. Make it three. Oh, and they're pointing at Dallas. And it is. Holding. There is Darren Woodson, who uh, doesn't look 100%, but he's back in the lineup. Watch Alexander, 86. Darren Woodson's coming this way. He's going to try to Illegal put the block on him. Illegal hands to the face by the defense, number 55. Kind of forced him outside. By the penalty, automatic first down. And the that's penalty, Matt, is on Fred Strickland. That's Illegal a, hands to the face. That's an automatic first down for the Giants. Remember I said this first drive would be big for the New York Giants. And they've come out right now and they, hey, on the 40-yard line going in. So they, they have the Cowboys where they want them at this point. 27-yard screen pass set it up and the Giants. For the first down on the 40. Play fake. Pinnell going for Callaway. And the penalty, and that is going to be Kevin Smith who shoved Chris Callaway. Yeah, that'll be interesting. How, yeah, now it's going to be on Kevin Smith. Because he took that flag and set it in a specific spot. And he wasn't going to beat him based on speed. Callaway can't run away from Smith. He wasn't going to beat him based on position. Smith also had the right position. The defense, number 26, automatic first Just down. run with him. Just run with him. That looks right there. I don't know. That, that's, I don't like that one at all. you got to let him play. You yep. can't. Man, that, Looked right. like he pushed I'm him. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Oh, that's too early to do that. I think it's a bad call. First and goal at the seven for the Giants. Neither team has scored a touchdown yet. And the give is to Wheatley. He fights his way to the six-yard line. There's a guy who also has picked his game up, Brock Marion. Remember a couple years ago when they were playing Dallas Cowboys? said, you know what, we're going to attack Brock Marion. We're just going to isolate him. Brock Marion has gotten better and better, and he and Woodson playing together play pretty well in terms of tandem. But he's, he does a good job back there, and I wouldn't have said that three years ago. Well, everyone knows about Kevin Smith, Deion Sanders, and Woodson. Brock Marion has been the latest to join that club. Second and goal on a rollout. Pressure on Cannell, and he throws it away. And it was Dexter Coakley who... That's a smart play, Dick. 
chased Danny Cannell. Man, Sonny Jurgensen always talks about young quarterbacks. If you ever want to impress them, want to impress your coaches, just throw the ball away. Live for another down. And he had a chance. He could have tried to force it to the corner. Instead, he just threw the thing away. That was the advice that the former Giant quarterback great Y.A. Tittle told Dave Brown about a month ago. Third down and goal. This is the opening series of the second half. Cowboys lead 6-3. The L pass is caught by Howard Cross at the 5, and that will be enough for a first down. No, it isn't. It's fourth down. Excuse me. Fourth down. Darren Woodson made the hit. And the Giants will have to settle for a field goal. So if you're wondering how Darren Woodson was feeling after getting bumped around a little bit, this should answer your question. Sitting right out there in his the zone, boom, right on top of him. Nice hit. Well done. Aloiso kicked a 27-yard field goal with 12 seconds to go in the first half. Is on again. This is a 22-yarder, and the kick is good, and the game is tied. So the Giants get points on their first possession of the second half and have not of this game at 6-all. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Texaco, a world of energy. By Kinko's, the new way to office. And by Energizer. Long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going. On that uh, last drive that resulted in a giant field goal to tie the game, most of the yardage was picked up by penalty. Two penalties of 38 yards. Danny Cannell threw three passes, and they rushed twice for four yards. And now Brad Deloiso kicking off. Brock Marion in the end zone, and the Marion will down it for the touchback. And the Cowboys will start their first time on offense from the 20. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. It all starts with America's most-watched pregame show. Then, catch an NFC Central battle as the Packers face the Bears, followed by the Rams and the 49ers, plus other regional action. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox. Check your local listing. San Francisco's schedule not real strong, and the team to watch, to me, Minnesota Vikings. They look better to me now than they have the previous year. Good point. Here's Emmett Smith on the pitch. And Emmett Smith getting the first down and more on first down, 13 yards. And that was all Daryl Johnson. And Corey Miller looked like he was going to have force to the outside. And force me have to take everybody back inside. Now watch Daryl Johnson's going to come in and just takes him, heads him to the inside, makes him hesitate, and then Smith is able to get to the corner. So much of this game is played on leverage and position, and Johnson understands that really, really well. First and 10 for 33. And again, it's Emmett Smith. This time it's Jason Seahorn that... Brings him down after a pickup of five yards. Last week, Emmett Smith rushed 13 times for 43 yards. He has 67 thus far today. Yeah, you know, you hear all this talk about Emmett Smith. He's not the same Emmett. What the heck is wrong with him? Then you watch a run like that where, you know, he's going to the outside. He's not a speed guy. But, you know, he makes the first guy miss, makes Corey Miller miss, and then gets on to the, into the second level and picks himself up a good five yards. Tight end Eric Bjornsson. Lines up wide to the left. Second and five, and the pitch again is to Emmett Smith, and the Giants close it down. Keith Hamilton tripped up Smith, and uh, no gain on the play, so it'll be third and five. You know, if you're a linebacker, and any time you have a tight end who's lined up wide outside, if you're a defensive end or a linebacker, you have to know those things, and you really rely on your secondary to make the call for crap. Because he's out there for a reason. He's not just, he's no little pretty wide receiver. He's out there to hurt you. Who's going to clean that up? I want to tell you one thing, it won't be me. <laughs> Third and five, Sherman Williams has replaced Emmett Smith for Dallas.
Aikman gets time, and the pass is caught by Michael Irvin. And Irvin has made a, excuse me, Bjornsson, who had made a very tough catch, and a first down close to midfield. All starts up front. They protected Aikman inside. And then Bjornsson on the outside is able to work the young rookie guards. I'm sorry, that's Tito Wooten, 29. But here's where Bjornsson has to get better. Bjornsson has to be able, you look at the, look at the protection, time to throw. He has to be able to learn how to beat the defender, not just run around. Aikman looking for Michael Irvin, and he makes the catch and nearly broke it. It was Sparks finally to make the play, but the Cowboys get 27 yards and are threatening to the Giant 17. Yeah, he had time, and he also was able to roll to the right side and watch Eric Williams up top. Here's the reason why. He takes Strahan, muscle, 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 now force him back inside and collapses that whole right side. And then when you have that kind of time, they jump the... Look, look that's perfect. That is perfect. You see the mistake that Seahorn made? Seahorn took his eyes off the, the, the receiver and looked back to the quarterback. And that's where the separation occurred. Here's Emmett Smith back in there. And Keith Hamilton hits him immediately. And he's down at the 15-yard line. 37-yard pass play to Michael Irvin. And the Cowboys are threatening. Neither team has yet to score a touchdown. And we're under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Remember last week in that Chicago Bear game against the Cowboys, they, they were blitzing everybody seemingly at any time. Well, the adjustment that's been made by the Cowboys is they, they've adjusted their protections to blocking from the inside out, and that's been effective today. Smith inside the 10-yard line, short of the first down by a couple. Corey Whitmer defending against Smith. There's two ways when you're running a red zone defense. There's two ways to go, obviously. You can you can go with coverage and give him time to throw and just give him the use the short field to your advantage. Or you can come with pressure and force him to have to make a quick decision in a short field. Last 10 games. Cowboys have had to settle for field goals most of the time from the red zone. Herschel Walker in motion to the right. And Aikman throws it. That would count as three points if it were a field goal attempt. Michael Strahan, for the first time today, putting good pressure on Troy Aikman. Now, he was going to try to get to Irvin because here's the reason why. Sparks bumped outside. You end up taking Jesse Armstead inside. Tito Wooten, he turned him over to Wooten. And then because Strahan was getting the pressure right away, Aikman did the smart thing and threw it for three. And once again, as you pointed out, the Giants' third down defense has been perfect today. Here's Richie Cunningham for a 26-yard attempt. And Cunningham's field goal is good, so the Cowboys break the tie. In the battle of three-pointers, the Dallas Cowboys lead the New York Giants now 9-6. to six. Cowboys regain the lead 9-6. to six, And the MetLife blimp Snoopy 1 is under the command of captains Russ Adams and Charlie Graham. Thanks, guys, bringing you beautiful views of Giants Stadium this afternoon. That would be Linus and Pigpen. Exactly. Pig Pen was my favorite guy. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Shouldn't be. I dressed like him. Don't we go in kicking off? It's a short kick. David Patton on the 10 yard line returning. And Patton is hit at the 22 yard line by Bill Bates, the ageless Bill Bates, in his 15th year. Timeout. We'll be right back. You know, you watch Eric Williams and Michael Strahan. You saw him being physical. Well, now what you do is you use that against him. And so Strahan takes him upfield, gets the headbutt, and just as he gives it to him, he whirls right back inside and beats Eric Williams. You know, you're an offensive lineman. you got to tell your quarterback, hey, that's not going to happen again. Sorry. Giants with two tight ends, Cross and Pierce. Charles Wade getting the call. 
And Wayne, a hard runner, brings it out to the 30-yard line and a gain of seven yards with Brock Marion making the tackle. Dick, the New York Giants offensive line, which is, they're not a really talented group, but they're beating Dallas's down people. They're winning the battle. They're getting the push, and they're getting them blocked, and they've also protected them well. Tyrone Wheatley in the Giant backfield, second and three. Canelo will throw a slant. Kevin Alexander gets tripped up, but a first down for the Giants. Brock Marion did the tripping. Eight-yard pickup, and the Giants move the sticks. Nice quick pace. Ball comes out clean. The nice job of Fossil of integrating the quick things and the quick passes inside. This kid, Alexander, what I like about him is he wants to make the play, and he works to get open. Charles Way in, and Wheatley goes out, and Way is hit by Coakley, who makes a fine tackle, limiting the Charles Way to a gain of two. So it'll be second down and eight as we get down to the six-minute mark here in the third quarter. Cowboys lead nine to six, and they have dominated the game from the vantage point of ball control. They've been, on, they've been keeping the Giant defense on the field, but again, the Giants come up with a big third down when they had to stop. Three wide receivers this time on second and eight. Underneath to Callaway, nothing doing. One yard pickup, Darren Woodson on the play. So, third and long coming up for the Giants. Hey, remember, Lance Scott, the center who's starting today, is the third center this season. He started with Brian Williams, got the eye, then Angler came in. They come with a blitz inside it. Hey, Scott is right on top of it. You see, nothing is getting to this side. That means the quarterback's not getting any pressure. Can credit. There's Brian Williams who had eye surgery. And there has been some improvement, and that's great news for yes, Brian yes. Williams. It was perhaps the best giant offensive line. No, not perhaps it was. Third and six. High pass out of the shotgun and the pass to Eric Pegram will be short of the first down by five yards. And Same thing. Dick, remember earlier in the game we talked about what the Giants did? They were going to do that, you know, remember that clean to pawn four stuff? Same thing. They're going to let everybody sit back, and they're going to give you the underneath. So Kidnell has nothing to throw down the field, has to dump it off, and they and they don't get the first down. Good defense. Brad Maynard. And he knew Deion Sanders. High kick. And Deion is going to let it bounce. Giants will try to keep it in play, but they can't, and it goes into the end zone for the touchback. 4.22 remaining here in the third quarter at Giants Stadium. Cowboys will get the ball up by three. Back here at Giants Stadium, want to remind you that the Yankees and the Indians coming up tonight at 7 Eastern for Pacific. Game four of the American League Division Series. Yankees lead 2-1 after Paul O'Neill's Grand Slam homer last night. Dwight Gooden will be on the mound against Oral Hershiser. Revisit of the 1988 Dodgers-Mets National League Championship Series. And the Yankees have dominated at Jacobs Field, winning 15 of the last 21 games. That's tonight at Fox. Dave Brown, who had to leave the game with that muscle injury. Dallas ball on the 20, and the handoff to Emmett Smith, and Jesse Armstead with a tackle, but not before Emmett gets five. Work on the inside game, and you got Nate Newton and Clay Shiver working on the double team. And then if you're Emmett Smith, all you do is you find that big old rear end of Nate's. <laughs> and Easy and to when, find. When it starts to clear <laughs> things out, you just go right towards it. 74 yards for Emmett Smith today. Second and five. To number 22, and Michael Strahan brings him down after a gain of about a yard. You know, we talk so much about Jesse Armstead, and you, he shows up a lot of times in the passing game. But and you say, you know, if you run right at him, he has a problem. Well, that he made the play. Strahan made the tackle. Armstead came up and stuffed Daryl Johnson in the hole and forced it to go outside. Third down and four. He 
Franklin and the whistle. And there was contact inside. As soon as they make contact, they're going to blow the whistle and stop that thing. And it's... Before the ball was snapped, yeah. encroachment by the defense, number 97. That'll be an automatic first by down. By penalty, it's still, I'm sorry, Robert it results Harris. in a first down. And watch Robert Harris right here. If he would jump and get back, he would be okay. But when he jumps and gets contact, then they're going to call. See, if he goes over and comes right back and there's no movement, they can't call anything, they let it go. Well, the giant third down defense had been uh, terrific today, but uh, that encroachment penalty gives the Cowboys a first down by penalty on the 31-yard line. for Herschel Walker is thrown out of bounds. And right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to Kevin Harlan at our Fox Television Center in Hollywood. All right, Dick in Buffalo, Detroit's Barry Sanders, who has three consecutive 100-yard games, rambles for 39 yards, setting up a 30-yard Jason Hansen field goal. Sanders now at 98 yards on the day. Lions coming back. They trail the Bills 13-6. Let's go back to the Meadowlands. Kevin, thank you very much. Lions will be going against the Buccaneers next week in Tampa. Cowboys with second and ten now. And here comes the blitz. It's picked up. And the pass is intercepted by Corey Whitmer. And a flag is down. Whitmer with the interception and the penalty. He got his bump. He got his bump. I don't know if I like this call. He's within the five yards. He's allowed to get his bump in there. That's what Felipe Sparks is arguing. Before the pass was intercepted, pass interference by the defense, number 90, automatic first down. And another first down. Instead of an interception by the Giants in Dallas territory, it's another first down for the yeah, Cowboys. Right, watch number 90 right there. He's got to be working out. Remember where the ball was. So he had five yards to get the bump. There he's on top of it. I don't know about that one. I disagree. The other thing is, Felipe Sparks had his helmet off. That could have been 15. And he didn't call it. Here it is right down here. Watch it. There, the ball's not thrown. There's the bump. There's. They're going to call because the ball was thrown. And then he made the contact. But he was within his five-yard rule. You're right, the Giants were fortunate that they didn't catch Sparks. Sherman Williams checks in for the Cowboys. And Walker goes in motion. And they go to Sherman Williams, and he is hit by Michael Strahan for no game. Giant defense continues to play well, even in their 2-3 and three season. That has been the consistent factor for them. Strahan's been a big part, and he's... He's playing pretty well. He knew going into this game that it was going to be physical working over Eric Williams, but he knew that he was going to have to bring his A game every single play. He's done that. Three wide receivers for the Cowboys. Aikman gets pressure and the pass caught by Anthony Miller. Now they rule incomplete. Incomplete. That's a good call. And the officials waited before... They came in and called it an incomplete pass, but it was the right call. He, he juggled it. He never had control. When he was down, he had still had not control. Working on Sparks, he comes back inside. There's the ball. It's flopping around. Still doesn't have it. There's the hit. And then it comes out down below. Officials still discussing that play. Well, they're holding the spot. Pass it would be third and one. The player fumbled the ball and recovered it himself. Brings up third down. Okay, so they're going to say he did have control when he went down and then fumbled it, and that would set up a first down. So the ball had to hit the ground after they ruled he had possession. Right. Now, from where I'm set, sitting up here, it didn't look like he had complete control of the ball. John Fox signaling in the Giants defense. It'll be third down and two for the Cowboys on their 42-yard line.
Blackman calls a timeout. That is the first timeout of the second half for Dallas. We'll be right back. Aikman, Anthony Miller, ball's going to be thrown inside. The question is, did he have control or not? Throw right there, boom, ball comes up, doesn't have control. He's trying to grab it. You watch his other hand try to get it right there, and it's out. Now, from this vantage he point, have, I have. would say he did not have control of that football. After a timeout, third down and two. Flag is down. Emmett Smith dives forward for the first down, and now a second penalty marker goes in. No, it's not going to matter. It looks like Keith Hamilton was over the over the ball. Scott Galbraith and Jesse Armstead uh, went out each other briefly. Hockley, our referee, making sure before he makes the call. Offsides by the defense, number 75. Yeah. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Yeah. He was right. And then on the other side, Jesse Armstead working on Scott Brown, Galbraith 81, gets in there. Now, this is what he's calling. See, that's what he was going to call, that Galbraith had his right hand hooked. They just keep on going. One thing that always comes up with Jesse Armstead is he said he's really intense. He's intense in practice. He's intense in the locker room. He says it's not like he just turns it up anytime. He says he's like that all the time. And wanted to be drafted by the Cowboys, but uh, they drafted Darren Smith in the second round, who uh, Armstead said he beat out at uh, Miami in college ball, and then Barry Minter in the sixth round wants to prove his team wrong. So twice the Cowboys have first downs as a result of penalties on this series. From the 48-yard line of Dallas, and the pass out to Darrell Johnston, knocked away by a stray hand. Gain of eight. Then we talked about how they're blocking to the inside. And this is what they're doing. They're going to come with a blitz. What the Cowboys are doing is everybody's coming down inside. If anything's going to come clean, it's going to come from the outside. See, they step inside. Shiver does a nice job. They block inside here. So they have these three taken care of and these two taken care of. And you pick everything up. No way the time of possession has been heavily for Dallas. You wonder when the giant defense is going to wear down. So far, they've hung in there. Second down and one. Aikman's pass up the middle is intercepted by Tito Wooten. He's got Aikman to beat. Touchdown, Giants. No play. Sixty-one yard interception return for a giant touchdown. Tito Wooten has been hanging out there all day, just sitting inside, waiting for this. He's been holding the middle, trying to take away that deep slant or any inside move. The majority of the time, he has been on Michael Irvin as the inside man on the double. Brad DeLuiso will try to give the Giants their first lead of the game, and the kick is good as he continues a 13-9 game now in favor of the Giants, who finally take a lead, and they do it on a defensive touchdown. Aikman is able to set up. They're going to come just with a simple four-man rush, so he's got time. Nice job of Agnew, who beats Larry Allen and gets a little bit of pressure at the end, but here's your key. They have, they're going to double him. Tito Wooten is sitting down inside. Seahorns to the outside. Wooten has been hanging there all game long. He's not going to give him the inside. A nice job of Seahorn. A nice job of Agnew with the pressure, which forces the throw by Aikman, and Wooten's gone. That is his first career interception return for a touchdown in his fourth season in the NFL. Still accepting congratulations, and the Giants up 13-9 with 
40 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And that coverage is nothing new. They've been doing that all game long. Wooten has been dedicated to the inside of Michael Irvin the majority of the game. And so the pass that Aikman tried to throw in there did not go unnoticed, obviously, by Wooten because he's been he's been assigned to him all game long. And Matt, that was only the second pick thrown by Troy Aikman all year. So he's kept that number down. Brad DeLuiso kicking off. Ursel Walker returning for the Cowboys. And he's got running room. And Herschel Walker with a great return close to midfield. That was a 47-yard kickoff return knocked away by Doug Coleman. You see this thing's going to open. He's going to come here and then bounce back the other side. And anytime you do that, you start one way, and then the guys running down on the kick start streaming, this case to the left, and then the blocker gets to the top side and create a wall, and that's what Walker was able to hit. That's his longest kickoff return this year. And the Cowboys for the first down on their own 48-yard line. With the giant crowd very much in this game. Aikman to throw. Anthony Miller and the pass incomplete. Billy B. Sparks covering on that side. And we talked about, we talked about Anthony Miller in our pregame show. We were talking about him here in the first half. Anthony Miller has got to take pressure off the rest of the pass game. He's got to pick his game up. He's got to get open. He's got to get separation. He has to make play. And I think more than that, Dick, I think he has to get some confidence with his quarterback. I don't think Aikman really is too thrilled about throwing a team out there. Doesn't look that way. Second and ten, Emmett Smith. And it was Sam Barnes who hit Emmett head on at midfield in a pickup of two. And that should be the last play of the third quarter. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants 13 and the Cowboys 9. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. As we start the fourth quarter, this game is in sharp contrast to the last four first meetings between the Cowboys and the Giants. Dallas shutting out the Giants in the two previous games, but trailing 13-9. As we start the fourth quarter, it'll be third down and eight for the Cowboys at midfield. Ducks it over to Emmett Smith, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down by Scott Gallion. A gain of only three, and the Cowboys will have to punt. And he got some pressure on Aikman. Again, they keep chipping at that thing. Slowly but surely, he's starting to feel a little bit more. And again, they go with the zones behind him. This is Bratsky working down below. And then on the other side, Hegeman working on Michael Strahan, and Strahan is able to get the pressure. Toby Goen, shank one kick, went only seven yards. That's why his average is down so much. Amani Toomer beat deep for the Giants. Yeah, they got a guy jumping over there. That's going to be on the Dallas Cowboys. Looked like it was Daryl Hardy, 54. Had a little bit of a flinch. For the snap, full start by the offense, number 54. Yeah, good call. Five-yard penalty, it's still fourth down. Yeah, by you. Once you're set, so once you're set, you can't make any movement. Once they call that set and you're down there, if you even flinch a little bit, that flag's going to be thrown. Barry Switzer has had to answer a lot of questions about the Dallas offense. With all the punishment Troy Aikman has had to have, he hasn't been punished that much today, but the Cowboys have not scored a touchdown to this point. Five-yard penalty marked off. Going with a good kick. Schumer at the 11-yard line. And he brings it out 
close to the 20. And a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. That was a 41-yard kick by Cohen. And this one will be will go back. It'll be against the Cowboys. And they're going to make him kick it again. A member of the kicking team, number 57, was ineligibly downfield before the kick. Five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Linebacker Vincent Smith. So the Cowboys now move back 10 yards. Now he says ineligibly because your two outside guys can be down quick. But your inside has to wait till the ball is punted. And if you beat that punt, they're going to throw that flag. If you give Amani Toomer uh, some more room, he's standing at about the 15-yard line now. Toomer, the former Michigan star. Another good kick by Goen. And Toomer at the 11. And Coakley is going to run him down. And a loss of about seven yards on the penalty. Great pursuit, though, by rookie Dexter Coakley. And the Giants will start from inside their 15 when we come back. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Lexus and the new LS400. When was the last time you felt so connected to a car? By Old Milwaukee. Try Old Milwaukee and judge for yourself why it's America's best tasting beer. By Shell, moving at the speed of light. And by Craftsman 2200 Hand Tools, made in America, guaranteed forever. Welcome back to Giants Stadium. Dick Stockton and Matt Millen with the Giants leading 13-9. Danny Cannell in relief of Dave Brown, starting from the 14. Cannell looking to throw, swings it out to Charles Way. And Way brings it out to the 20-yard line where Kevin Smith and Randall Godfrey make the play. Dave Brown went out in the final stages of the first half. He had a injured muscle in his chest, strained last week. And now you can see he'll... Touched the tender part of his chest. Had to come out of the game, and Danny Cannell has been in there. Has completed 10 of 13 passes. Here's a pitch to Tyrone Wheatley, and Wheatley dives for the first down beyond the 25. Randall Godfrey again. Wheatley getting a chance to start for only the second time in his career. We'll have to put the shoe back on before he gets in there again. They're going to measure this one. You know, yesterday we were talking with Michael Strahan just sitting there. He said, you know, we know it's going to be a defensive game. We know it's going to be tough. If, and if our offense has problems, if they just get us some first downs so we don't have to always be on the field. And you can see they got the first down. That's what they need. Just get us some first downs and give us a rest so that we can be fresh when we get back on. It would be big. And it would be big the rest of this game, Matt, because the defense has been on the field more than they ever anticipated thus far. Yeah, but the defense have been playing great today. I and mean, they have really been playing well. Nice coverage. They've been getting more and more pressure as the game has gone on. But they forced them to have to drive the field, and that's been the key. Two tight ends for the Giants. First down on the 24 on the draw play. Wheatley. Not much. Cowboys have controlled the ball from the very start. Although they have not scored a touchdown. They have uh, virtually doubled the Giants offense. 31 plus to 15 plus. 55 plays to 34. And yet the Giant defense, instead of showing signs of wear, picked one off in the person of Tito Wooten and ran it back for the only touchdown thus far. Wheatley in motion now to the left, second and nine. Cannell's pass batted down. Roger Thomas got his hand. Number 51. And they came with a blitz off that side. Giants one for eight on third down conversions today. They need nine here as the Cowboys' nickel package is on the field. 
Eric Pegram checks in for the Giants, number 33 as well. And uh, Callaway started in motion, confusion on the Giant offense, so that will force the Giants to call a timeout. That's their first of the second half. We'll be right back. Early here in the fourth quarter, each team has called one timeout. The Giants right there. Danny Cannell, in his second year from Florida State, has completed 10 of 14 for 101 yards. Giants offense has shown a crispness, though, since he's been in there. It'll be third down and nine out of the shotgun. it off and unable to control it is Pegram on the low toss. Darren Woodson was all over him. So the Giants will have to kick and that means the defense will have to get back on. It's amazing how this giant defense has hung in there and you pointed out their third down stops. An interception for the only touchdown and they have more than earned their keep for this afternoon. Yeah, and they, what they've been able to do is to force the Dallas Cowboys to have to go the full distance. They, they have to get off the one big play. Brad Maynard kicking from his 10. Beauty. Deion Sanders back to the 20. He tried to split the middle and he couldn't do it. Brandon Sanders after a 55-yard kick. We'll be right back. Dallas ball. Watch Brandon Sanders, 34. He does the front end what Deion Sanders couldn't do at the back end, and that was split the two defenders. He comes down along with Doug Coleman. Sanders tries to split him, but Brandon Sanders and Doug Coleman don't let it happen. Bernard Hosey has replaced Michael Strahan to give the number 92 a breather, and Sherman Williams is the running back for the Cowboys on first down. Handoff is to Sherman Williams. Williams gets hit after a gain of about seven. And right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's return to Kevin Harlan at our Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Dick in Green Bay, the Buccaneers are on a roll. of Eric done 44-yard run, set up his two-yard touchdown run, camping a 90-yard drive. Bucks failed on a two-point try. Tampa Bay has scored 13 unanswered points on the Packers. To the Meadowlands, Dick Stockton and Matt Millen. That says something for Tampa Bay. Absolutely. Second and two, and the pitch to Sherman Williams. And he's hit close to the first down marker by Sam Garns, and he does not appear to have gotten the necessary yardage. I think three, four years from now, people are going to say, boy, we got to get a safety like that Garns. He's pretty good. Sam Garns, for a rookie, plays really, really well. I mean, he's aggressive. He shows up at the line of scrimmage. He understands coverage. I think there's a big upside for Sam Garner. He's just a rookie out of Cincinnati, but he plays like he's been there before. Played on the uh, pavement of New York City. That's where he learned his football. Third and one. Two tight ends. Aikman's pass is caught by Darrell Johnston. First down, Dallas, to the... Uh, 41-yard line with Armstead on the cover. Yeah, nice, nice job of Bjornsson. Bjornsson has the pick. See, he knows that Daryl Johnson is going to be covered by Jesse Armstead. And so you're Bjornsson, and you just run. You make sure you get in the way, and then that frees up Johnson to the top side. You watch him. See, he's coming off. Galleon has him. Make sure, see, he knows that Jesse Armstead's the guy. So you just kind of bump into him like, hey, what am I doing out here? And then it's a first down. Darrell Johnston, seven catches for 55 yards to lead the Cowboys. Of the 41, Aikman. And this pass is picked off. It's Tito Wooten again. His second of the game. That was a bad throw by Troy. Two interceptions. More than he's thrown all year. Both to Tito Wooten. And the Giants get the ball back. Ooh, Eric Williams is hot. He threw his helmet about 15 yards. And you're going to watch. He has the time. Has time. Just steps. He's looking to his left. And at the last second, he's going to try to hit Bjornsson to the right. But as he's stepping left, he just tried to arm that thing out there. 
Watch him. He's looking left. Look, watch his feet. Steps. Steps not there. Goes the opposite way. And he does it with Wooten sitting over the top of Bjornsson, and it's a big play. And the Cowboys' offense seems more out of sync as this game goes on. with a first down on the 41. Canal under siege. Boy, they sent everyone. And they had that thing set up, too. That was a nice call. It just wasn't it wasn't able to get completed because of the pressure. But Canal had it just about right, held on to it just about long enough, but just threw it where it couldn't be completed because it was set up perfectly. Tyrone Wheatley was his intended receiver on this screen pass. They had three guys out. There was one defender set. He'd have a chance to get to pick up a lot of green. On the ground, an opening for Wheatley. And Tyrone Wheatley tackled by Brock Marion. Gain of six. Cowboys misfiring. That's a good description for what they've done today. Now you can see the missed field goals, the penalties, and the penalty yard just taking away 80 of them in the two picks. And then down in the red zone again, they have not been able to stick it into the end zone. Now, both of those interceptions, two you can see in his last four attempts. One in his previous 167. That last one, though, he didn't have his feet right. He just tried to come off it the opposite way. That's very un-Troy Aikman-like. Third and four, and this pass intended for Callaway. Not even close. Uh, I mean, this, now this is what the Giants didn't want to get into. They didn't want to have to be able to get into a throwing game because it's a mismatch. Dallas's secondary is too good for their receiving core. Not with guys like Deion Sanders back there. and Now he's going back. He has uh, averaged six and a half yards a punt return compared to a season's average of over 17 yards. So the Giants have done a pretty good job keeping him in track today. Brad Maynard to kick. just goes down. That's what you want Dion to do, just go down. Hey, he's on his gut, he can't run. We have gotten some splendid pictures from above today. Thanks to the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One, which contains over, well, 70,000 cubic feet of helium. I'll trust this. Measures almost 50 yards in length. I will not measure it. So you're telling me that Snoopy's got a lot of gas? You said it, kiddo. <laughs> First down for the Cowboys on the 17. <laughs> Emmett Smith spinning away. And ends up with a pretty good gain out of it. Bratsky was the first to get to him and got about eight yards on that one. Well, they stopped the point, but he didn't stop. He just reversed his field and came back out. You know, here's another thing on the inside today. You see, Aikman hasn't been hit a lot. And, and they have gone with blitzes. They've picked him up. Kid inside, Clay Shiver, has done a pretty good job. He's been under a lot of heat inside to make the calls and then also to be a little bit more physical. But today, he put together a pretty decent game. He's kept the Giants away from Aikman by and large. Second and two. Swing pass out to Herschel Walker. And the tackle made by Jason Seahorn. Boy, is he a tough cornerback. And he's getting better. I mean, he's, he's getting better because he's more comfortable with the position. He's a physical guy. But most importantly, he's getting healthier than he was at the beginning of the season. At the beginning of the season, he wasn't able to come off of things and make quick cuts. Now he is. Under eight minutes remaining, fourth quarter, third and three. Flags fly, three of them to be exact. And we're going to have a false start call against the Cowboys. That'll bring up third and eight. Again, now if you're the New York Giants and it's third down, you Four know staff, what you have. By the offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty is yeah. still third down. That's Clay Shiver. And we talked about not being able to move anything. Watch the ball. 
So you got to get down there. Once you're set, you can't have any real quick movements. And he did. He moved up, and he also moved this. And that's what drew him offside. Aikman will be the focus. They have to beat him with somebody else. Pressure up the middle on Aikman. Robert Harris gets to him. And that is the first sack of the game for either team. And this crowd on its feet. He wanted to get over to the other side with Michael Irvin. Irvin's going to have help inside with Ellsworth, but he didn't need it. He looked to the other side, and it was going to be Jason Seahorn, but he got undercut by Corey Miller. And then to the inside, Robert Harris just goes right by Clay Shiver, and Larry Allen, who should have picked him up, didn't get the job done. Harris was ill this week, missed practice on Thursday, but he did not miss this game. And a booming kick by Toby Goins sends Amani Toomer back to his 30. Toomer looking for a crease. He's got one. Flags fly as Toomer goes down at the Dallas 32-yard line, and he is stopped by the punter, Toby Goins. Penalty down. And the return was 28 yards after Goins' booming 59-yard punt. But the call coming up. There was no foul on the play. First down. No, Big return. That's a monster. And a short field. Remember at the beginning of this game, he said special teams had to give their offense a short field. This is how it happens. First of all, he gets a great kick, but a nice job of the Giants who were able to keep the Dallas Cowboys at the line of scrimmage. So you got your separation, and then he's able to take it back up. Actually, going, going saves it. I mean, Coakley was on his horse and had a chance with his speed, but going is able to get up there and trip him, and that is the difference in the play. 38-yard punt return, the longest of the year by the Giants, and they'll have it inside the Dallas 35. Amani Toomer, who's emerged just as Tyrone Wheatley, a couple of former Wolverines, and the Giants leading by four, have a first and ten at the 33 of the Cowboys. Danny Cannell in relief of the injured Dave Brown, and the pitch is to Wheatley. Tough to bring down, Brock Marion got there in a pickup of a bout. Well, let's see, maybe no gain by the looks of where he went out of bounds. Well, and, all, and all of the defense has been played today for the Dallas Cowboys. You can see Wheatley with 54 yards on 15 carries. This series right here is the most important one. If they can hold them here and not give them three points, or the six, obviously, but they've got to hold them right here in this field, in this field position, to give themselves a chance. Test for the Cowboy defense, for sure. Second and ten. Here comes pressure up the middle. Cannell going deep. And a flag down. I don't know about that. Last time they called this one. Hey, now, look, Kevin Smith has his helmet off. Halloween. And that's a big mistake. Here comes another flag. That, that it one it. is definitely going to be on Kevin Smith. Now, on the other side, they called one earlier. It's going to be the second one. Same kind. On Kevin Smith. That's two pass interference calls. This one is on... Chris Calloway, and then he took his helmet off, which is another penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Now, I did not like the first call. You have to let him play down the field. And there's going to be that incidental bumming and, and jostling for the ball. There were two fouls by the defense on the play. Pass interference by the defense, number 26. It was a cutoff. After the incompletion, there was also unsportsmanlike conduct by the defense. Number 26, violation of the helmet rule. Again, he's going to run with him. The There's down. the bump. Stay with it. He said it's going to be a cutoff, which means he's going to try to run into him. I, I'm sorry. I, this is a good call. He obviously took his helmet off, and he was disgusted. And you got to keep your head. No pun intended. One thing, Matt, <laughs> the Giants have challenged that vaunted secondary today. Yeah, they've gone after him. That would have been an incompletion. Two of them. Kevin Smith has three penalties for 64 yards, but I don't know. 
That's to a, me, you gotta let, you've got to let them play down the field. And there's going to be the bumping back and forth, and he's saying he was cutting them off. By, it's judgment, right? Yeah, I guess it is. My judgment, I disagree. Right. Right. And you have the right to do so, for sure. So three pass interference calls against the Cowboys today will give the Giants on this latest one. First and goal at the three. Rob Zaniska is lining up as a tight end to the left. Hand off. Charles Way, touchdown Giants. That is the first offensive touchdown of the game. Heck, they just blew a hole right up inside. They just took that offensive line. Remember I told you earlier that the giant offensive line was winning the battle against Dallas's defensive line. Charles Way with his first TD of the season rushing. Brad DeLuiso in to try the extra point. It's good. And with six minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, the Giants have opened up a 20-9 lead over the Dallas Cowboys. All they did was just turn it into physical football, just go straight ahead. Ron Stone comes down. They trapped with Aaron Pierce, Chad Hennings. Hennings got way too far up the field. And he just went blowing it right up inside. Irvin McCormick gets blocked by Stone. Bragg does a nice job. Tony Tolbert tries to come around the outside, but hey, when you're trying to tackle somebody from behind, that means they're in front of you, and in this case, it's six points. And it was set up on Amani Toomer's 38-yard punt return, and then a pass interference penalty on Kevin Smith, and then an unsportsmanlike conduct call on Smith for taking his helmet off, and that set it up for the Giants, who scored from three yards out. The Giants have scored the only two touchdowns, one by Way, the only one by the offense, and on Tito Wooten's 61-yard interception run in for a score. And uh, that man has his work cut out for him, Troy Aikman. But there is time, 6.18 to go. Danny Cannell, I'd say, I have to say he's the pitcher of record today for the Giants. The pitcher of record. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, he's the pitcher when the team has taken the lead. So, uh, oh, okay, it's a baseball, baseball term. term. This is football season. <laughs> Indians-Yankees tonight on Fox. <laughs> I got the plug in. Kickoff return by Brock Marion. And he is uh, ridden down by Doug Coleman. Well, the key penalty has to be Kevin Smith's penalty here. They make, they make that call, and... And then here's the second penalty was right there. I was, I disagree with that. I'm, I'm sorry. I think you have to let the guys play. You're not, you know what? And people are going to say what they want to say. But in my view, from a defensive point of view, you got to play. You can't go out there and do nothing. He had perfect position. The ball would have been incomplete. Coverage was right. Callaway was bumping. He was bumping. Let him play. You only won four Super Bowl rings. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? First and ten at the 25 for the Cowboys. Troy Aikman trying to beat Dallas back. Screen pass to Evan Smith. Jason Seahorn again penetrates to make the play. Jason Seahorn read that thing before the ball was ever thrown. I saw I saw Seahorn starting to break before the ball had ever been thrown out there. Watch him. He sees it. See how he's looking in the backfield? Right there. He broke a poor job by Michael Irvin. It was a poor job by Irvin because he saw Seahorn break at the same time. Second and 11. Aikman guts it off to Emmett Smith. And he's tripped up. Scott Gallion. Gallion's turned into a pretty nifty player. Yeah, they go back. They go play. I, I think this Giant defense, look, the Giants win this football game and the chances are good at 29. This whole defense deserves a game ball because they played really well. And they played long. Third and eight. Aikman's pass knocked down by Seahorn. Boy, he's had a Intended great game. for Michael Irvin. Jason Seahorn seemingly is breaking quicker, and there's a flag down, is breaking quicker 
And the penalty's Mike, against the Giants. Then but, Irvin is. I mean, he's breaking on the ball quicker than Michael Irvin is coming out of his, his breaks. Part of that is because he has help to the inside with Tito Wooten. Illegal hands to the face by the defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Uh, Michael Strahan with the uh, penalty, illegal hands to the face, and it's a first down. Yeah, number 92. Strahan's up top. Bratsky's down below. He's working on two and a Goes with a headbutt. I don't know. I didn't see anything unless it was early when he got his hand up. So instead of uh, Seahorn making the big play on third down, it is a first down for the Cowboys. They keep it going. Penalty story. Dallas has been hit hard today. Here comes Pressure on Aikman and nearly picked off by Corey Miller. Boy, they came Conrad Hamilton off the corner on the blitz. Aikman stood in there. He saw it. He knew it was going to happen. And he threw that ball. Corey Miller looked like the intended receiver. Watch him coming off the top. Remember we said, oh, look, at that was a great job, Emmett Smith, of seeing it ducking. Look how he ducks underneath. He's not going to let his quarterback get hit. And then Miller, Miller undercut step Fred Williams. As sharp as he was in the first half, and as off as he is in the second. This offense is struggling. Second and ten at the 33. Aikman's pass underneath is caught by Bjornsson, but the quick hit made by Jesse Armstead. And that'll bring up third down, and an injured cowboy on the field yeah, is Eric Williams. Eric Williams, right, the right tackle. Well, it has been a physical game up front when the Giants are on the are, are on the field defensively. Brasky this time is standing up, 77 outside. Oh, look at that great headbutt. That's that's the way you play tough football. Except here's what happens: he went with the headbutt and hurt himself. He was going to go with that aggressive bang, which is all legal, get the hands and head on him. Got it backfired. And I think he probably got himself a little bit of a stinger. Bratsky took it. He was expecting it. Hands and head. He winds up. Bing. Right there. Okay, that's all fine. Now Bratsky goes to the top side. Eric Williams just goes down for the count. And that looks like when you get a hit like that, sometimes you get those burners that go down your neck into your shoulders. Well, Matt, this is the beginning of a tough stretch for the Dallas Cowboys playing for their next six games on the road. Next week, they've got a Monday night game against the Washington Redskins who are trailing the Philadelphia Eagles, then a home game against Jacksonville. Then look at Philadelphia and San Francisco on the road. And then the Arizona Cardinals, no longer a pushover with that defense coming up then. Cardinals are in every game. In fact, and they beat the Dallas Cowboys earlier in the season. In overtime after trailing. And uh, they came from behind to win that game. And the Cowboys struggling here as George Hegeman, number 69, comes in at right tackle for Eric Williams. Third down and four for Dallas on the 39. pass to Michael Irvin. He's got the first down and gets into giant territory with Conrad Hamilton and Percy Ellsworth combining to make the play and a pickup of 12. A smart move here by the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to hurry up offense as Eric Williams is back inside. Eric Williams back in at right tackle. First down. Aikman going deep for Irvin. And covered by Felipe Sparks and Tito Wooten over there as well. And see now that time. That time, again, it's the same kind of jostling down the field. It's Felipe Sparks, 22, working on 88, Michael Irvin. Tried to do the stop and go. There's the bumping and all that stuff. That happens in a play. No, you're not going to throw a flag on that because that's the way the game is played. That's why I disagree with the call earlier with Kevin Smith. He disagreed really with both of them. Didn't yeah, I, you gotta let the guys play. That's what the game is for. Second and ten. 421 on the clock. Aikman going for Michael Irvin. Going for the money receiver. And he 
connects and another first down. A gain of 15 yards with Sparks covering. And again, the hurry up offense by the Dallas Cowboys and Tito, Tito Wooten, Wooten is taken up. Yeah, Tito Wooten is down. Again, you remember when your nickname is Playmaker, and it's this time you got to make plays. And I don't care if you're being doubled or they're rolling coverage to you and they're undercutting. And here comes Tito Wooten to the inside. See, they've assigned two guys, and he still comes up with a play. So you can say a lot of things about Michael or hate him, like whatever. I don't care. He comes to play every week. That's why I've always liked him. And Troy Aikman respects that above all. First and 10 at the 35. And again, they go to the tight end, Bjornsson. Close to the first down of marker at about the 26 yard line, a pickup of nine. Timeouts remaining. Each team has two. And we are under four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. The Giants leading 20 to 9. Second down and one. And the give is to Evan Smith. He's got the first down to the 23. Giants defense, what we talked about. Getting tired of being on the field. Now they're tired. Hamilton's walking back slow, not getting down right away. Bratsky, same thing. And the hurry up Michael makes it Stray, worse. Yeah, Strahan on the other side. They've been on the field a long time. Three wide receivers on first down from the 23. Here is Beyonce, and he's cut down after a gain of about two or three by Conrad Hamilton and Jason Siebel. Now, then, you got to take your shot into the end zone. It's not going to do you any good to chip, chip, chip here. One of these times, you got to take your shot. They've stalled the majority of the time in the red zone, and it looks like they're starting to choke out again. And a 20-minute edge in ball control. Second and seven. And again, they go to Bjornsson, and he has enough for the first down. And uh, getting down to two and a half minutes there. Talked about the giant lineman. Slow getting up, stray hand, replaced by Cedric Jones. Bernard Halsey also in. Ratsky goes out as well. First down at the 12. Here is Emmett Smith over. And Emmett Smith tackled by Armstead, but he gets inside the Giant 5. Tuane is battling hurt also right now, kind of holding that right shoulder. Time is a monster. They have to get this thing off before the two-minute mark. You've got to take your shot into the end zone. Robert Harris back in the game for the Giants. Hand off to Emmett Smith. Close to the first down as we get down to the two-minute warning. So the Cowboys are threatening to go in for the first time in the game. Two-minute warning at Giant Stadium. We'll be right back. Two-minute warning here at Giant Stadium with the Giants leading the Dallas Cowboys 20 to 9 and the Cowboys with a first and goal at the two-yard line and they need two scores. They get a touchdown here and a two-point conversion and a field goal. They would tie this game at 20. But first things first for Dallas. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Two timeouts for first and goal. You're down to the two-minute mark. And the 14th play of the drive. get it on the first play after the two-minute warning. Dick, I talked about Anthony Miller having to pick up his game. Couldn't have picked a better time to pick it up. Back at the end zone, they're going to—they're lining up for the two-point conversion, but he got to the inside of Seahorn, the ball was thrown, and he goes up and gets it where he had to at its highest point. Cowboys 0 for 1 this year in two-point conversion attempts. And the Giants will call a timeout. Oh, they got messed up. You see what happened? All of a sudden, Anthony Miller was lined up man-to-man -man with Jesse Armstead. And that's a mismatch. Although Jesse Armstead right now doesn't think it is. See, he's down here. Watch Anthony Miller. Watch him saying, hey, look, nobody's over here. Look, Jesse Armstead sees it, and he goes out and lines up. 
Here's the TD pass to Miller, his fourth catch of the year. Yeah, remember, remember he had one earlier, his first, his, one of his catches for a touchdown against Philadelphia. Same kind of place in the back of the end zone. Again, he had to pick up his game. We talked about that. He's working on Jason Seahorn. Irvin draws everything here. Now watch, he's going to take Wooten back inside. Seahorn doesn't roll enough back to the inside. He kind of lost his man. But regardless, nice throw and a great catch by Miller. Here's how important this two-point conversion is. If the Cowboys make it, they're down by three. And all they need is a field goal. If they don't make it, they need a touchdown to pull this game out. Yeah, and regardless, they need a touchdown in regulation to win. So, of course, you go for it. get the touchdown and the two-point conversion and trail the Giants by only three now 20 to 17 he had enough time to get that one off that was the key a lot of time they're gonna take him run back out this is a companion route by the tight end and the near back Conrad Hamilton is hanging to the top side as the safety but as you can see Aikman had a lot of time to throw Galleon works up top he pushes him and now Hamilton, who was sitting to the outside instead of over the top, got caught out of position. Aikman saw it, wait for the break. A lot of time, big touchdown. And Bjornsson for the conversion, and it's 20 to 17. The Giants have one timeout left. The Cowboys still have two remaining with 154 on the clock. The scoring drive for the Cowboys, 14 plays, 75 yards, Cap by the two-yard catch by Anthony Miller. And, uh, boy, that giant defense showed some fatigue for the first time today in that drive. Now an onside kick with the Giants having their good hands people up front. But they kick it away. And Patton back at the seven-yard line. Muffs the ball. It's loose still. Tyrone Wheatley Tyron Tyron picked, it picked it up. Boy, there was a monster opportunity for the Cowboys and a great job of Wheatley of going to the football. That was the right decision to kick away. David Patton was going to try to pick up as much of that yardage as he could, and he, and he muffed it. Remember, the difference between a fumble and a muff is possession. And he did not have possession, so that's a muff. Then he got on his horse to get there. Cowboys had their opportunity, but Wheatley... Wheatley stays with it and picks it up. And well, last week, you can see his heart go right down to about his stomach. Against New Orleans, the same thing happened, and Wheatley alertly recovered. First and 10 at the 14-yard line, Charles Way. And the Cowboys trying to strip the ball away from the giant fullback. Timeout, one. And a timeout is called by the Dallas Cowboys. So they have one timeout remaining. With 1.45 showing on the clock. Okay, so what's going to happen? If they stop them on second down, they'll call a timeout again. And then they'll take the full comp. They should get the ball back with enough time for Aikman with no timeouts. Should give him enough time to be able to work the field. This is this turned into just a great football game. And a lot of pressure right now on the shoulders of Danny Cannell in relief of Dave Brown who went out in the second quarter because... The Giants cannot afford to play it conservatively and just keep the ball on the ground for the reasons he just mentioned. So Cannell going to have to put the ball in the air. He's got a second and eight coming up. Well, you know what, though, Dick? That doesn't go to Cannell. That goes to the sideline. And, that, and that's going to be if Jim Fossil thinks Cannell can... And this is, this is a big time right now. See, if, if Fossil thinks Cannell's ready for the big time, he'll let him take that extra burden. out of bounds that'll now the clock is going to continue yeah. to run that's the right call by the official and now the cowboys who are claiming that wheatley went out of bounds no. vehemently protest now it doesn't matter it's a good call by the official he would have been stopped in bounds and the cowboys tried to force him to the sideline which was the right thing to do so but then the official's judgment he was stopped right there here comes wheatley here comes woodson woodson does the right see now he's going to keep him up see how he's going to take him to the sideline Forward progress. Yeah, but the official's right there, and he's making the right call. And Darren Woodson 
really protesting to the line judge. Yeah, he's saying he's out of bounds, but but the line judge was right. That's a good call. And the Cowboys forced to call their last timeout with 1.36 remaining in the fourth quarter. That'll bring up third down and 11 for the Giants. And remember, the Cowboys trail by three. They just need a field goal to send this game into overtime. Wheatley, you know, Wheatley right there, no situations. He just has to learn how to lose his feet and just squat and fall down instead of being forced out, even making it any kind of a, a decision. All right, third and 11, Giants. With one timeout left, Cowboys out of timeouts, and Cannell tripped up, held onto the ball, back inside the five-yard line. So, Dick, there was your answer with Jim Fossil. So Jim Fossil is saying, you know what? He's a young guy. It's a tough position. We're not going to make let him force a mistake. Our defense has been playing well enough all game long. We'll take our chance in the run. We'll punt it and see if they can't win it for us. But they try to go wide to no avail, and then Cannell got mixed up with the footing. And as a result, Deion Sanders is at midfield, and Brad Maynard will be kicking with 107 to go. Giants lead by three, and the Cowboys have no timeout remaining. And the Giants left the clock one down. That's a smart move. That's their third and final timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. Now the Giants called a timeout. Yeah, with Before one second clock, left. Yes. There was one second left, right. and they called it. So, so they'll reset it again on a 25 seconds. Neither team has a timeout remaining. And Troy Aikman ready to go back to work with under a minute to go and looking at good field position. Game. No foul. Third timeout now, for, De for New York. See, now this is where a guy like number 21 for the Dallas Cowboys really scares you. Now, you want to get a good kick. But you also want a directional kick it. You don't want to give them the whole field to play with. You have to be careful because you want to get some distance to it, but you also want to keep it to the sideline to pin him in. Brad Maynard. The white area is the out-of-bounds area. There's Dion. He's primed to put on a show. Sanders at the 43. Oh, great play by David Patton. Unbelievable. David Patton, who made a big play on the opening game of the year against the Eagles, made one again. Yeah, and also when he had that muff. But what a great play. And you know what? I don't think he knew it. He was going to try to tackle Dion, fell off him, rolled into it, and made the play. That was a 52-yard kick by the rookie Brad Mader. Watch him. He comes streaming down there. He's flying. Now he takes, see, he missed it, and he stayed with it. And it ended up tripping up Mathis, and he makes the play, got to the sideline, he said, what I do? But he knows now, Kevin Mathis, the rookie, tripped up by Pattons. Dallas ball on their 36. Those were Troy Aikman's numbers on the last scoring drive. Dallas out of timeout. Complete intended for Stepford Williams, and it was Conrad Hamilton all over. Nice coverage by the New York Giants. Great coverage. They're not going to let Michael Irvin beat him. They're going to make you go someplace else. Here he is down here. Look at the coverage out here. Sparks. And they take away the slot inside. Nothing up top. Safeties are over the top. They're going to make you have to come back inside. Ooh, I love this. Good coverage on Eric Bjornsson. Welcome to Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Dick Stockton and Matt Millen in the final minute. Of regulation, the Giants leading the Cowboys 20 to 17. Dallas is out of timeouts. 
They have a third down and 10 on their 36, needing a field goal to tie. Troy Aikman back to throw on his pass, and it's complete. No timeouts. No timeouts left. Step Brett Williams was able to beat. Gain of 15. Longest field goal by Richie Cunningham was 53 yards. And that's what uh, the Cowboys need, three. He's a rookie. What they need is about 15 to 20 yards of field position. And so if you're Troy Aikman, you got to be thinking, stop the clock in 15 to 20 yards. You have 18 seconds left, so you figure you have two plays. Now the Giants have got to defend the sideline. you got to defend the sideline. Cunningham has three field goals today, but missed one from 40 yards out. Second and ten. Aikman's pass, and it's caught by Bjornsson they inside gotta hurry up. the 20-yard line. they got to get the and offensive a, line down against there. the clock. they got to set up and, and spike the ball. Spike the four. Three, two. Oh, he got it. He stopped it. Out. No, 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 no. Flag is down. They yeah, no. He down. snapped the ball with one second left and downed it. And the defensive players have to make every effort to get back to the line of scrimmage. And if they don't, it's a it's a penalty on the defense. Here's Ed Hockley with the call. The flag went down, and the time ran out. Let's see if they got the spike down in time, or a penalty will allow them to. Now, Dallas... The offensive right tackle was not set. Oh, that's Therefore, the game. there is a false start by the offense. A 10-second runoff. That's and the game. game is over. And the Giants have upset the Dallas Cowboys in a thriller here at Giants Stadium, 20 to 17. And this now look, is the final play. See, all these defensive guys have to get back and get set. They have to give him. Aikman is calling the ball at the line of scrimmage. The clock is at one second when it was snapped. Now, they're saying that the right tackle wasn't set when it was snapped, and they're right, because look right here. They got two guys not set. However, there's a defender still not back. There's a defender still not back. Here's He's calling look. it. Yeah, now they got Larry Allen gets up there, and here comes Eric Williams, and he was moving, but Chad Bradsky still wasn't there. Right now, let's go down to Mike Ducey, who's with Jason Seahorn. Mike? All right, guys, Jason Seahorn, the Giants defense comes up big today. What did you feel coming into this game? Did you? Not a lot of people didn't give you a chance against the Cowboys. What did you think coming in? We honestly felt that if we played to our capabilities and didn't make a lot of mistakes, that we can compete and, and we can stick around to the end. And, and we did that today, and we came out with the W. The great coverage, especially late in the game. Comment on that. You know, at, at the very end, you know, in the third and fourth quarter, we were trying to just, you know, shut them down, keep them in front of us, not give them any big plays. And then that last drive, we were just trying to, you know, keep them in front of us, make them use the clock. Jason Seahorn, thank you very much. Let's go back to Dick Stockton. Thanks. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And our energizer play of the game is the interception by Tito Wooten. First of two today by Wooten. The Cowboys were leading 9-6, to six, and Wooten picked this one off and ran 61 yards for the interception touchdown to give the Giants the lead they never relinquished. We'll have the post-game show coming up next. Matt Millen and Dick Stockton, goodbye from Giants Stadium, where the Giants defeat the Dallas Cowboys 20-17. to 17.